that they can join later. Welcome, everyone, to the 46th episode of Some Casual Takes, a podcast hosted by me featuring other sports fans debating interesting topics with the most factual takes, because we're in our factual takes era. No more of that casual crap. Uh, this episode is brought to you by no one. We're here with Michi on the pod. Bro, make some good content. You may, you're making a lot more soccer content now, I've been noticing, on my For You page. Bro, it's because the NBA season kind of died down. So, like, yeah. and, like, it's, I don't know, like, I'm passionate about both sports, but I don't know, bro. Like, I feel like, here's the thing. I feel like I can do the GOAT debate so many times until it gets annoying. And I even, so like, I'm not naive. so annoying. Yes. Bro, like, I'm not naive to the fact that the GOAT debate just gets so fucking repetitive, bro. And, like, it's just, like, I don't know. Like, I steered away, but I'm all, dude, I love the NBA. I was talking about the Lakers a lot when they were in the playoffs, and then they fucking, uh, and they I don't want to talk about that shit. Yeah, they I don't lost. Talk about the Lakers, and then we got Matt, NFL, NBA post in the building. What up, Matt? What's up? Ready to cap for some plumbers again. So you see the title of the screen. We've got some good topics today to talk about. NBA free agency. I don't think players can get signed officially, officially but – Official talks can start Friday at six. I don't think they yeah. can ink a contract at on Friday, but they can begin discussions. So we're gonna go through our predictions and some of the top free agent guys. Obviously, we gotta talk about the Lakers offseason. I've talked about the Lakers offseason a bit, but since we got Mitch here, I want to get his views on kind of like what the Lakers should do this offseason because he he'd be capping for LeBron. He he wanted he one of <laughs> us. He one of us. And we gotta talk about Dame because I think you're a Heat fan too. So yeah, uh, I'm from Miami, brain. so yeah. I want to pick your brain about Dame and all the Dame drama because your team is kind of wrapped into that and then some other miscellaneous topics. Sounds good, um, bro. But I want to tell you guys who do listen to this podcast, this isn't just a basketball pod. We um, In the football season, we were talking about football, and I talked baseball a little bit on opening weekend. But I just know so much more about basketball. I just end up talking about basketball a lot. But I promised you to all my football people – and to all my people who like other sports, more sports will be discussed in the future um, because I do like talking about other sports. Just basketball, I just know more, and it's so easy. And since the most people I, who I know on TikTok who I can get on the pod only talk about basketball. But NFL Post knows NFL, so maybe yeah, in the yeah, NFL I could talk, season, I could talk football. up here. Anyone up here watch baseball, or am I just by myself? Yeah, perfect game oh. yesterday, Herman. Herman okay, Dominguez. so you do. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I can talk some baseball with some people for a future episode. Yeah. Bro, I love so like, football. Too. I actually guys, started like... my account as a football account. It's kind of, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I started my account as a football account, and then it just went all the way to basketball. But I, I love the NFL. Oh, really? Oh, so you talk football? So Fins you're up, from baby. Miami, so you're a Dolphins fan, I assume. Fins up. Fins up. Yo, Matt's a Patriots fan. I don't know. Are you, yeah, you yeah, right yeah. I'm from Boston, so you guys might start beefing. It, it, it's good. The, the, the Dolphins are going to be nice this year. They will. I think. I think they're. I think they have a good core. I, we, I don't know about Tua, but I think we'll be good. Yeah. You got Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. I think you guys are fine. That's an offense in and of itself. Yeah. And Waddle about the solo podcast, too. Um, I know a lot of you guys messed with my solo podcast when I would just come on here for 30 minutes and just talk by myself. Those will most likely return when football season begins. It's kind of hard to do solo podcasts in the offseason because the offseason are just heavy discussions about narratives and predictions when I would like to get guys from TikTok on here to talk with. But solo podcast will come back soon. But it's the off season. We talk narratives and predictions. Um, none of this like high IQ basketball talk. Straight casual takes now. Okay. All right. So let's get to the NBA free agents prediction. Actually, I'm gonna wait for Kieran and J if Kieran and Jaden, if they come up here, we'll start with that. So let's shift with the Lakers off season first, and then we'll go to the free agency predictions if one of them joins. So let's start with the Lakers. So I've talked about the Lakers offseason a lot already during this pod and on my TikTok. But we got a Lakers fan up here. Or a LeBron fan. Oh, LeBron, I fan. LeBron, fan. LeBron fan. LeBron fan. There's a difference. So the Los Angeles Lakers, the team that LeBron does play for, you know, they flipped that team around over the deadline and they got this close, just lost to the Western Conference Finals. So a, as free agency pretty much opens tomorrow, there's a lot going on in Rob Palinka, Jeannie Buss's Spears – where it's like, what are the Lakers going to do? Quit dodging Rashawn Holmes' legacy? Okay. Um, so, Mitch, I want to ask you. I'm going to get you started off. So, the Lakers, they got they just picked up, I think, Jared Vanderbilt's option. 
So they got Jared Vanderbilt back. They drafted that Hood Shafino dude. Yep. Um, LeBron, AD, I think Christie's still under contract. So they think about six guys under contract. What do you think the Lakers should do in this free agency? I mean, ideally for me, right? If I was like painting a perfect picture for the Lakers, I would want them to go out and get Brooke Lopez. I think he's um, a perfect fit with AD and LeBron, a guy who can stretch the floor. He's played in Milwaukee all these years with a guy like Giannis who can't shoot from the outside. And AD has his lim- – like he's limited, shoot- limited sorry, shooting from the three. So I think bringing a guy in like that who can stretch the floor and can block shots was one of the best rim protectors in the in the league this past season. That to me would be the ideal, I mean, situation. I don't think that's going to happen. Mark Stein reported that he's going to probably go back to Milwaukee, him and Chris Middleton. But for me, right, obviously the Rockets can offer him because the Rockets have all this cap, cap space and they're not selling anybody. They got like $60 million. Well, and they got to bring somebody in. They might even bring in Fred Van Vliet. But to me, I would want to bring in Brooke Lopez, a guy like that. If that's not possible, I say bring back the same core. You know, when I see, like, John Collins and who he got traded for, I'm like, dude, we couldn't have traded Mo Bamba or, like, Malik Beasley for John Collins, who's actually a pretty decent player. Um, but I think the core that they have is pretty good. That's, that team last season looked really good. I'm not a fan of D'Angelo Russell. I never have been. I never will be. I think he's I, – I mean, dude, the amount of times I saw him in the playoffs shoot a contested mid-range and fucking brick it off, I, I was going to I was gonna kill myself, honestly. It was terrible. Uh, but – um, I think, you know, a guy like Rui Hachimura, who showed last season flashes, he was one of the best players in the playoffs for the Lakers. We got a guy like Austin Reeves who came into his own and is going to is gonna be part of a big three probably. And we got a guy like like LeBron James, who I, th- I still think he's playing at a high level, even in year 20, obviously going to go into year 21. I don't think he's going to be the same player that he was this past season or the year before. Injuries are obviously catching up with him. But for me, ideally, I'd bring back the same core. Tell Jared Vanderbilt to develop a corner three because he's a liability shooting, and that really fucked them over because that was a guy that didn't have to guard, didn't have to guard in the playoffs. The Nuggets weren't even guarding Vanderbilt. He's good defensively, but offensively he leaves a lot to be desired. So for me, I'd bring back the same core, maybe make some moves around the margins. You know, can you bring? I don't, you can't you can't bring in Fred Van Vliet. He's too expensive. He wants like forty million. That's not gonna oh, happen. God. You can bring in a guy maybe like <laughs> you can bring in a guy maybe like a, I don't know like, I don't. It's really. It depends, like, because Kyrie Irving, I'm not a Kyrie Irving fan, and I think. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. What, what is your? Because first of all, wait, I kind of missed something. So you said you're not a fan of D'Lo, but you said bring the core back. When you say core, is D'Lo a part of that? No, core? No, D'Lo's well? not part of the core. We gotta get rid okay, of. Okay, so D'Lo. you're talking about I... Reeves and Hachimura. Of course. Reeves and Hachimura, LeBron and AD, and obviously if okay. we can get Brook Lopez, because dude, the thing about Brook Lopez is we needed a big body in the in the playoffs to when AD was off the court, and we you know they were playing Tristan Thompson minutes, who was in the ESPN booth literally a month before. Like And he actually gave him some pretty good minutes. So I'd actually look to bring Double T back. But a guy like Brooke Lopez, you can have a lineup because AD doesn't like playing the five. He's never played the – he doesn't like playing the five. Mm-hmm. We've heard that. And he's actually better as a four in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So if you have oh, a lineup he's of – He's definitely better as a four. He's better yeah. as a four. So if you have a lineup of Braun at the, at the one, you can have AR at the two, you can put Rui at the three, you can have Brooke Lopez at the five and AD at the four. That's one of the best defensive units in basketball because Rui, I think, is a plus defender. He's not a great defender, but I think he's a plus defender – and you're talking about two guys who are elite shot blockers in the league, but probably the two best, him and, and Triple J, obviously. But th- to me, Brooke Lopez makes this team, to me, will be the title favorites. Obviously, Denver, you got to respect them because they're the defending champs. But I think D'Lo getting out of there, you know, getting that money off, do you maybe pick up Malik Beasley's team option. They have a team option on Malik Beasley and then use him to trade some pieces around like that. I know I'm rambling on, but for me, it's around the margins moves. If you can get a big guy, not Kyrie Irving, but if you can get a big guy like, uh, a Brooke Lopez, get him or Fred Van Bleet. But anything else, I think I think it's a pretty good team. And I think having some continuity going into the offseason is going to make them a lot better. See, I was the one who's pushing for Brooke Lopez. And we're going to get into free agency predictions out of everyone in a second. But let's say Brooke Lopez, I don't know how realistic he is thinking about it now. And let's say they don't get him. And you're saying don't bring back D'Lo. There's still some money there. So who would you like to add if they don't bring back D'Lo? Because I – I think I saw – I was looking at their cap earlier. They would still have a cap to get a solid guy if they don't bring back D'Lo and they don't get a guy like Brooke Lopez. So who would you think the Lakers should get if they don't bring back D'Lo, they don't get a Brooke Lopez? The thing is, like, if we're talking about guards, is it, it's a pretty light guard class in free agency. There's not really a lot of good guards out there. So, like, to me, right, who, who are some of the good no- – I'm blanking right now, but who are some of the good notable free agents that are guards? Like, we have Kyrie Irving, who's probably going to go back to the Mavs. James um, Harden. James Harden. Like, he's – I'm 
I don't no even think they'll look good. James Harden. Yeah, <laughs> they're no not. Way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just throwing out names. I mean, there's Russell Westbrook if you want to. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we saw how that worked out. Um, yeah, it's a big you know, I want, you know, Chris Paul would have been ideal for me. I think Chris Paul would have been really good for the Lakers. I don't know why they didn't try to get him, especially when we see what the Warriors gave up for, you know, to get him. You know, Jordan Poole, who's, you know, he's a good guy. He's a, I mean, he's a good player. He's going to have fun in Washington, but he's not, you know, could we have given up maybe Mo Bamba and Malik? Probably not. They, they probably would have wanted more. But I don't know what guards you can bring in. Like, there's other guards like Karis LeVert, uh, there's like Will Barton, oh, Josh Hart, Derek Rose, guys like that. Uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis Schroeder, you got to run back. I mean, Josh Dennis Hart's Peter, solid. Josh exactly, Hart's I forgot about him. Yeah, then there's like Josh Richardson and Bruce Brown. Seth Curry. I, 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 I did see them linked to Bruce Brown, though. I did see that. I would love Yo, Bruce Brown. Imagine the Lakers get Seth Curry, man. That would be good. Dude, I think <laughs> Seth Curry would be perfect for that. I heard some I Seth think. Curry rumors. Bro, because uh, the thing is, no, the honestly, honestly, like – if the Lakers get Seth Curry, their spacing would be so much better. Be yeah, ridiculous. they're spacing locks. Um, like, the I don't know his name, but you know the the Asian shooter from Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, uh, Watanabe. Oh, oh, yeah, Utah Watanabe. Yeah. yeah, he's been linked to the Lakers as well. The Lakers, have yeah, also been linked. I, to I call him. Brown. You don't want to be in the NBA. That's what I call him whenever he misses <laughs> a shot. The Lakers have been also linked to Bruce Brown. So I have to change my Lakers. Last time I talked about the Lakers offseason, I said get Brooke Lopez. I don't think it's realistic anymore. No, he's resigning um, with Bucks. I think. And I my think problem with, my problem with Brooke Lopez. A lot of people want to give him a lot of money, but he's thirty-five and like. This is like his best defensive year, but like the Lakers can't you know, afford him. I don't he's think he's playing Lakers. with one of the like best defensive yeah. in the NBA. Yeah. That's my I don't problem. Think the Lakers can afford us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm not paying that much money to somebody who's like, the, like, like you said, like 33, 35 years old, and is benefiting off of Giannis in his best defensive season. That, when I don't, it's like maybe you can get that caliber of production playing next to Anthony Davis as well. Yeah, I still, yeah. I, 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 still wouldn't risk it though. It's not going to be like the worst thing in the world if they get Brook Lopez, but I, I don't necessarily. Will. I mean, I think if, really, if yeah. Brook Lo- if Brook Lopez is not on the Lakers or let's say the Warriors next season, like I'm not paying him that money. Yeah, I mean, a guy like Clint Capella, you could try and trade for. You know, a lob threat. He's a pretty good yeah, player. I, mean, I think the Hawks are trying to get rid of some pieces, but. What do you give up for Clint Capella? You know, what can you get? Like, you know what I mean? So, Miles Turner would be ideal for me because when I see a guy like Bro Lopez, he's a guy that's similar in the sense that he can stretch the floor and he's a pretty good shot blocker. But, dude, what do you have to give up for Miles Turner? He's a decent player in the league and you're not, you can't just get him for, for nothing. Dude, so, I don't think, I don't dude, know how. Miles like, Turner has been in trade rumors now. It's been saying, like since like 2018 that people no, have been I'm talking about serious, the Pacers might like, trade Miles Turner. Miles Turner has been trade rumors since his second year in the league. And that same with John Collins. That's um, seven years ago. I was reviewing the Lakers cap. Um, if they bring back Reeves and Rui due to their restricted free agent type things, they only have like enough money to – bring back a D low level contract. Like I think they only have 15 to 18 million dollars. And that would require them getting rid of Mo Bamba and Malik Beasley. Because if they bring back those two guys under contract, they'll have zero money. What do you think of D Lo? Can I ask you what you think of D Lo? He's, He's fine. I think in all <laughs> honestly I was a little too harsh on D Lo because um even though six points by the way in a Western conference finals it's terrible bro is bronze tier level player in my team um but he was good against the grizzlies though he had he some was, good moments against the grizz but then the, nuggets, he the lakers collapse. are fine no. the lakers are fine running it back if I, they can get I, somebody I, on the mid-level exception i want to see how they work it pause but um i guess they're fine running it back but, if you're uh, the lakers running the whole I, crew back and i think so, that's what the rumors latest rumors were is running it back unless out of nowhere unless out of nowhere Dallas wants to do a sign and trade with Kyrie, and then you ship D'Lo. Um, um, that's what you got. My, th- my thing about D'Angelo Russell, I literally said the moment that they trade for D'Angelo Russell, I knew they were not going to win the championship just because I know what D'Angelo Russell is. He's never been good in the playoffs, and when he has a moment to shine, he always fucking folds, and that's what happened last year. Yeah. Um, but I think like, we could – no, no, keep going, keep going. It's unfortunate, but, like, Dealer just sucks. <laughs> yeah, he's bad. He's bad. He's not – like, he's just 
like I told, I was telling them earlier before you joined, I was like, dude, the amount of times I saw him take a contested mid range in the playoffs, and I'm like, dude, the ball just grinds to a halt when it's in his hands. And I don't know why, because he's actually a very decent player. He's actually a pretty good finisher around the rim, and he can, yeah. you know, he has a nice touch, but I don't understand why he's so obsessed with chucking up these shots and they don't go in, and it pisses me off because the Lakers get into this nice role, and then he just. Also, one thing I want to say, and I know I kind of have a reputation for being a LeBron Glazer, and I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> but, bro, one thing I will say, Mate. I think I think Braun was was really affected by his foot injury towards the end of last season. And I think if he comes back with a full offseason of being a little bit healthier and maybe can get into that playoff run and that stretch, like not injured and not with like a basically a, a foot that's 50%, I think the Lakers can still, you know, the, the West is just going to get better. The Denver is just going to get better. And the Grizzlies are probably going to get better. So... I don't – the Golden State might get better. I don't know about Chris Paul. I don't know what you guys think. Maybe we can get into that later. I don't think Chris Paul is going to be a good piece for them. But the West is going to keep getting better. But I think that the Lakers, if they can – Shooter has to come back to me. I think he was one of the best players yeah. in the playoffs for them. Really good defensively. You know, can guard, can guard the perimeter. And is also – he can make some shots. He misses a lot of them, but he can make some shots. So, for me, if, if that all happens, I think the Lakers will be good to go. And it's, it's on Rob Palenka now. We'll see yeah, what he does. I think if you're the Lakers, I would just honestly – Run it back with everybody. Get a bunch of vet minimum guys, low in contract guys to fill the rest of the roster who can shoot, who have size, especially guys on the wing. Troy Brown minutes. Yeah, we'll see you later. Um, get better shooters than that. Guys who won't disappear in the postseason. Um, floor spacers. Get a backup, a real big man with Anthony Davis. Now I don't know who their starting five will be on this team. Wedding game. I don't because Nas Reed's <laughs> gone. Brook Lopez might be a little unrealistic now. I don't know who that center is going to be to run Anthony Davis at the four, but um, I got to bring back Thomas Bryant. My one thing about my, <laughs> bring one thing about Bryant, LeBron, it's not. my one thing about LeBron is that he's 38 years old. And once he gets the surgery, like, like I feel like people just assume that he's going to be like the super, like absolute monster that he was like even before the injury. I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. And just that's why, just because that's he's, why Kieran, he's 39 years old. That's yep. why, Kieran, this is the one of the most important off seasons in Lakers history. Because if they mess this up, mm-hmm. like if they don't go back, if they don't go to a final, let alone like at least get back to a Western Conference Finals, LeBron's year 21 going to go play with Bronny this next season. Yeah, he's going to go to Maybe Atlanta. another year of injury. And the team, you have, you're left with a team that can't win. Yeah, this is probably one of the most important off seasons in Lakers history. Now, I want to ask this question. Now, it's a little bit more of a let's say the Lakers do have a pretty good off season. Um, I actually, I'm actually curious if Bruce Brown becomes a Laker, but let's say they actually do have a pretty good off season, so good that they go to an NBA Finals and win the whole thing. Mitchie, yes, sir. What would a ring in year 21 do for LeBron's legacy? I already know you think LeBron's a go. I know it's set in stone for you, but let's be a little bit more objective here and think of to like a wider range audience. So if LeBron James would win a ring in year 21, what would that mean for his legacy? I just want to say, by the way, to everybody on here, um, I know on my TikTok, I kind of come across as this uh, condescending and kind of an ass sometimes. I don't like when I'm doing long form content like this, I'm not like that. I can't be objective about LeBron and I can't speak about him in an objective way. Look, for me, Obviously, there's obviously going to be the conversation, LeBron, Michael Jordan. I think LeBron's the GOAT. I think his longevity and his consistency has proven that to me. And I think when you see the teams, obviously, people talk about the weak East. You know, that's a real point. But I think LeBron James is the best carrier of talent in NBA history that I've ever seen, right? Um, I'm a guy. This is going to shock you guys. I throw on my mom. Handle the Bible. I'm not even religious, but handle the Bible. I've missed five LeBron playoff James, LeBron James playoff games since 2012. Five. I've only missed ever five. I can, Bro, and I can recall them. them. Bro, yeah, count them. I can recall them. So to not me, a true LeBron fan. But to me, <laughs> to me, true, LeBron, to me LeBron, like least least glazing LeBron fan right here. To me, LeBron, what he what he can gain is you know cementing himself to me as the goat. Winning a title in year twenty in, in year twenty one, and if he's the best player. If he wins Finals MVP, you're talking about a longevity that we've never seen before. And you know, Kareem did it, but Kareem was over the hill. You know, he wasn't really that great. He did it with Magic, but you know, it's he was in a he was in a different stage of his career. I think LeBron James, if he wins a title this year, depending how he plays, obviously, we got to see how he plays. If he's a yeah. sixth man, it doesn't matter. Big thing. But I think if he can average his usual his usual 27, 7, and 7 or whatever, 
and they beat up Celtics or Bucks in the final or maybe whatever other team, the Heat, I think that just – I mean, you're looking at a guy who for 20 years, he's been an All-NBA player, nine, I think 17 of those 20 years. So to, for the voters, he's been one of the 15 best players in the league for 20 years, plus having five championships. The finals losses are still going to be there. Those are never going to go away. But when you see when you see that longevity, I think it's hard to argue anybody else is better. Obviously, Jordan had the peak. But when you look at LeBron early in his career, especially early in Cleveland in 08 all the way to 2014, you're looking at one of the best, probably the second, the best peak to me in NBA history. 2013 to me is the best season ever. You can argue Jordan 88, Jordan 96. It's all part of the conversation. But we're looking when we're looking at LeBron James and the, the stretches that he had, I think it's pretty undeniable. He wins a title. He wins his fifth title in year 21. And you can't use the excuse of the bubble because obviously, God willing, there's not another pandemic, you know. I think that puts him in very story, especially with not a super team too, because Anthony Davis and Austin Reeves, that's not a super team, you know? If he yeah. goes and joins the, 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 the Bucks, then it's a different story. But with this team that he has, I think it's, it, it will cement them to me. He's already the GOAT to me, but it would just put him even more ahead of the, the next closest guy with to me is Jordan. So um, I have Michael Jordan as a GOAT, and I don't really care if you have LeBron at two or, like, or LeBron at one. Um, my thing is about like I've always been like a peak over longevity guy because I would take you at your absolute best over like a guy who's like been dominant for like way longer just because like I I feel like I feel like your best is more important. But like now if like LeBron plays like well like like in another playoff run and he wins the championship, it's gonna be even hard for me to say MJ is the GOAT because he's don like he's been dominant for so long. So like if we're going by like best player all the time, I would say like Jordan. But like if I'm like, oh, is like is LeBron the GOAT like because of his longevity? Like maybe like I I would be open to that conversation. I mean, you guys know I do, like I don't do the goat debate, but I would just be there for because the tensions will be at an all time fucking high in in the goat debate, and well, and I could guarantee, and NBA that's and that's why Twitter, I that yeah. NBA Twitter, Twitter that summer would be the funniest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Hey, can hoist up insane. your twenty one championship. Okay, I will say this: if LeBron James wins Finals MVP by playing like Cedric Maxwell, I'm like, all right, like no. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. But, well, well, that's that's the other thing is that I feel like at this point in time, Anthony Davis is better than LeBron, and I feel like and like let's just let's just say hypothetically, like LeBron's doing his thing, and then Anthony Davis is doing his thing, and it's kind of looking like this past season where Anthony Davis is the better player, but they gave LeBron the Finals MVP just based off the fact that he played good and it's a uh, name value. I feel like that could be a little uh, misleading um, when when you say like, okay, well, who's the best player in that series? I will say though, I don't think you can get a Cedric Maxwell MVP in 2024. You're not going to get a Cedric Maxwell MVP no, ever not. again. No, you're not, because just how stats are today, I don't think. Yeah. You can get that. Okay. <laughs> We've been talking about LeBron, the Lakers, too long. I want to get to the free agency predictions, but before we move off this, we're going to do a little summary. I'm going to go around and ask you guys. Obviously, Austin Reeves and Rihachimura are like the number one targets for the Lakers in the off season. But other than those guys. Who should be the Lakers' number one target this offseason? Then you guys just tell me really quickly, like, who do you guys think the Lakers' number one target should be? And just give, like, a quick analysis, like, two seconds. Are we talking just trade or just – are we talking trade two or just free agency? Um, if you think you can make a realistic trade, you can. <coughs> I would mostly stick to free agency. Who's on the free agent board? Christian Wood's a free agent right now. I wonder what he's going to demand in the market, you know? Like I think he's I think he's projected twelve million dollars. Twelve million, not much. I think Christian Woods' value went down because he I think he's game. projected twelve million dollars. Last time I checked, I don't know why he was riding the bench though for Dallas. He was really productive in the minutes he played. I mean, he played like twenty six minutes a game, was scoring like sixteen points. Well, like, yeah, well, Jason, well, Jason Kidd's like defensive scheme. Like he's more of a defensive guy. So like, if yeah. you're not a defensive guy, you're kind of fucked. So. Yeah, Christian Woods a liability. Uh, on, uh, should maybe you're saying the Lakers should maybe target Christian Wood. Maybe Seth. or I would want I would want Seth Curry too. If we can get Seth Curry, go get Seth Curry. But I don't think he, he's not a. Is he? he you can get Seth Curry. Uh, I would get he's Seth Curry. Cheap. He's going to be cheap. He's, he's cheap. Under, oh yeah, yeah. He's going to be a, like a minimum he's guy. Restricted, but he has bird rights. So yeah, so mm, that's the problem. Okay, bird rights. Uh, okay. So to uh, me, a good, a, good, back, a good big to back up AD and uh, maybe another shooting option like a Seth Curry. So that would be my. Oh, oh, I was going to say maybe. Um, He's not a. Let me see his contract. But I was gonna say Daniel uh, Lang, um, Gafford from Washington. He could be a good option too to bring him in because I think Washington's looking okay. to move him. 
All right, Kieran, number one target for the Lakers in free agency. Talks um, begin Friday at six. I think I think they should either go for Seth Curry or Bruce Brown. Um, I think those two guys can help with their four spacing. And like Bruce Brown, Bruce Brown could do a little bit of everything. He can play defense. He can pass. He can shoot. Like I'm not saying like he's like oh he can be another playmaker, but like he can, like he can do it a little bit. Like he, he was very impactful. Guy. I think yeah. he was the most underrated reason why they swept the Lakers. And yep. he has non bird rights, so he he could be like you know. And he's not going to be particularly expensive. I think he's going to get yeah. like about twelve million dollars, twelve to fifteen million dollars this offseason. Yeah, the sure Lakers can't afford that. That'll be a pretty solid piece. But what about you, Matt? Before we move on, I think the guy that the Lakers should target more than anybody is Dario Sarton. No, I'm kidding. All right, I think that they, <laughs> I, I think the two guys that they should look to get for the most is between Bruce Brown, uh, pretty much what you, we all just said. Like he can do everything, and it's not really going to be that or that expensive. Uh, another guy that I would actually look at for the Lakers is Jakob Pertl, who I have heard is probably going to leave Toronto because Pertl doesn't want to be in some rebuilding situation, a little bit like Nick Nurse left because of the same reason. Uh, but Pertl is a guy you could put him right in at the five and he could uh, be a rim protector and just a so- solid pick and roll guy. And then you can move AD to his natural position at the four. And I think that would be a, that, that would, that would be a less expensive signing than Brooke Lopez. Um, and I think it, I think it would work really well. Nice. Get AD at the four. They won the championship yeah. that way. They had their That's best like runs that way. Well, you okay. could just bring back Dwight Howard from Taiwan. No, not a bad after, honestly. Honestly, no, not a bad after. He's 40. Dude, <laughs> no, 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 no. I just saw a bunch of people dude, in my comment dude. section say they have Dwight Howard. They're winning games. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, Bro, he's literally the last 39. The he barely got oh wins God. in the Taiwan League. And now you guys are trying to say, Come to the Lakers and what do all you, that. What about DeMarcus Cousins? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the oh, shit. Shit, my favorite. Miss no got my guy crush time in here. What's up, bro? <laughs> oh, panel man. What's up, guys? Is, this is a good panel. We're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? Right. What up, Crunch? Crunch, just in time, bro, because we are about to do our NBA free agent predictions. And the number two mm. guy on the board is your favorite player, not Kobe, uh, Kyrie Irving. Oh, Kyrie's free agent. Yes, is Kobe good? Is Kobe going anywhere? <laughs> nah, damn, bro. Nah, I thought he was locked in with Dallas. Nah, um, he's got a contract to sign. He's not even he's not even a restricted, unrestricted free agent. Yeah, he's, he's good. Free. He can go wherever. He's got a contract to sign. So let's first start with before we get to Kyrie. Let's start with James Harden. Now, James Harden does have a player option. He hasn't even declined or accepted it yet, and it's kind of gripping the 76ers by the balls here. They don't know what Harden's going to do. Is he going to opt in, opt out? Of course, if he opts out, he's probably going to look for a better contract. Where do you? What do you guys think he? What do you guys think Harden does? Does he opt in, opt out? And if he opts out, is he still a Sixer or is he going elsewhere? I don't know what what, what options he has. You know, like to me, I look at James Harden as a guy who had a pretty good season this year. Could have been All NBA, arguably. Uh, led the league in assists. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, so I see, like, but in the playoffs, he actually played pretty well, bro. Like, I see the two games against. He had two games against the Celtics where he was decent. But James Harden is always going to be a guy that's going to have limitations, and I think that he should stay with seventy. He should stay with Philadelphia. Him and Daryl Morey have a relationship. They were in Houston together. They know each other. You know, maybe you can get another piece. But if he opts out, what's the option? Houston again? What are you going to go do in Houston? There's, they're full of young players who need to get playing time, and you're probably going to stunt their growth. And what, what, what's the other option? What other teams have cap space? Detroit? He's not going to go live in Detroit. You know what I mean? So to me, James Harden, the best option he has is to re-sign with the 76ers because I think that's where he's – I mean, he's, he's looked pretty good the two years he's been there. So I would, I would look to keep him. But if he goes, if he goes somewhere else, it would be kind of odd to me because I don't know what other team could use him. Okay. What does anyone else think? We're doing NBA free agent prediction. All right. All right. Talking James Here's- Harden first. Matt, yeah, my, James Harden, my, 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 where do you think he's landing? Yeah, my thoughts about where James Harden's going. Here's my take about how him and his management went about this whole thing because we've been talking about this since the Sixers uh, got bounced. The thing is, is that James Harden had like four good games in that in the playoffs, and if he and if he wasn't good, he was either mid or he was putting up tour date shooting stats. Now, now here's the thing. 
I, I can guarantee you his agency was telling him, like, you're a free agent this year. You're going to want to get paid. And you're really going to want to, like, like get the most. And you're not playing well. So this whole James Harden to Houston thing came in as this big smoke screen to bring Daryl Morey into panic mode because he said he is not about to go back to where I used to be the general manager He's not going back there, and now, that, like like you said, this player option is now really like he's like, he's grabbing him by the balls, and like that's just the reality of it. He's gonna get like a thirty five million dollar contract by the Sixers. I wouldn't I wouldn't give it to him, but that's just kind of what's happening. That like that whole thing about Houston, that's a smokescreen. He's going back to Philly. Yeah, I think he's going back to Philly too. But I did hear that the Clippers are like looking at Harden right now. They can't, mm. I don't think they can afford him. Yeah, they can't yeah. even pay Russ. I mean, like I thought they were going to trade PG. If oh the Clippers, shit! Uh, if they if they trade Paul George, then yeah, yeah I, I, I wouldn't trade Paul trade, George for James Harden. If, if the Clippers yeah, trade yeah. Paul, Paul George, Harden, he's a Kawhi, Cav. I actually would like that. I'm not gonna lie, I would. Paul like George that. is a Cav by the end of the week. I like Harden. Paul, Kawhi, I don't. The problem with Harden and like Paul, like Kawhi, is that you could just you just got two old injury prone players, like. Yeah. I mean, Jerry Harden West told him to stay. Harden, hamstring, Kawhi, knee. You're three games in the postseason. You have none Dude, of your stars. Jerry <laughs> West is Jerry West is going to be in like hospice care in five weeks. I don't really know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I thought you like those type of players, bro. No, I love Jerry West, but I I don't understand how this guy's still alive. That's yeah, the how is he problem. still how is he still running a team too? He's like yeah, a not, not only is he still alive, he's still doing something. Matt, yeah, still, Matt, Matt, your grandfather's still alive, Bob Cousy. <laughs> My grandfather's not Bob Cousy. It is, bro. Both yeah, he had that Bob, beef with JJ Redick on the radio, right? He's called out JJ Redick for calling him a plumber and shit. Bob Cousy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he had that whole thing. I love, yeah, that. I, remember, I love that. All right. So, Crunch, you, where do you think James Harden goes? I mean, I think he's going back to Philly, though. I really do. Respect. Mr. Kieran, uh, where does Mr. Titties Mr. over titles go? Huh? <laughs> Wait. That's what? what Ticket TV likes to call James Harden. Titties over um, titles. Uh, I think Titties Man himself is staying in Philly. Okay, cool. All right, nice. So we all believe James Harden. Although Houston seems like a tempting place, they got that 60 mil. We kind of just feel like it's just a whole leverage thing. Okay. Um, Kyrie Irving. Mm. 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 Crunch mm. Kyrie. I, I want to see him go somewhere like Miami. You know, or like, I mean, I guess he could try LA. I don't think it will work out in LA, though. I don't think it will work out in LA. No, I really don't. No, um, keep, keep Kyrie away from Miami and LA. Sounds like <laughs> that's no. Mitch's two favorite teams right there, man. Keep, keep Kyrie sounding, away. Like the way it's sounding, he may go back to Dallas. I think he will. I think he will too. Um. I mean, if Dallas if Dallas gives up all those all, all that capital, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, scene, but if, he, if, they, if they give up all that capital and they still don't bring him back, that's a failure by Mark Cuban. Because you you were the four seed before you bring this guy in, then your season you collapse, and then you he just, just leaves for nothing. That yeah, that's yeah. gonna suck. That's gonna stink. Then you're for him. stuck with Luca, Tim Hardaway Jr., no bench. That's like and, a thirty win team. Like Maxi Cleaver. Well, it's a no, WNBA team. No, it's yeah. it's fun, it's <laughs> funny because like you trade for Kyrie Irving and then like. You only play 16 games with Luca, and they're like, oh, and Christian yeah, Woods probably gone unless you overpay him because I don't know if Christian Woods gonna like his PT. It's no. Like you, you said it earlier, like there'd be games where Christian Woods, six man of the year, getting 25 minutes, and then the next game he's getting like six, and he kind of fizzled out of the rotation when Kyrie kind of yep. got there. I think I like, jinxed the Mavericks, bro. I couldn't know win the whole championship. <laughs> he went, he went downhill. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was, I was yeah. always questioning that defense. That's the thing is that like Kyrie, when Kyrie your Kyrie best defender is Maxi Kleba, I'm I'm not going to take that all too seriously. Yeah. I mean, hey, Kyrie got a top ten peak team. in the current just, NBA. Guys, the Kyrie's the best defender. But anyway. I just really think I just really think Luca's ceiling is so high. Like I think he can be the best player in the league. Yep, one hundred percent. I agree with yeah. that. 100%. My thing, my that, thing about that's Luka, more so what I was like, like the reason why I was picking him. My, my thing about Luca is that like his four raising, like offensively, will be like close to Magic and LeBron, but his defense, like, will just hold him back. Yep. Like, and people so compare got- it to Steph Curry. He's Steph Curry's a better, more he tries more on defense than Luca. Luca doesn't even try sometimes on defense. Looks like. And this guy, yeah, that's one, true. And Luca's one of my favorite players. Like it's like Luca, 
Damian Lillard and probably no LeBron. Sorry, sorry, my king. It's LeBron. Then it's Dame. Then it's Luca. And I would say that Luca Doncic. <laughs> I say that Luka Doncic is a liability defensively. Like in the playoff run last year when they made the WCF, they kind of no, he kind of did. But the, the teams that were playing, bro, Utah and and um and fucking the Suns anyway. who were just collapsing. Like, and then when they played against the Warriors, he kind of did get exposed a little bit. They had a much better defense. I thought, though, Dallas I, I thought Luka in 2022 was more like a neutral defender. I don't think he was actually a liability, but that's when he had like defensive help around him. Yep. Now, when you have a bit. this fucking team, it's – Luka's so hard to watch on defense. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to watch sometimes. Luka's and hard like, to watch. I feel like, like Luka shouldn't be that bad of a defender just because he's, like, bigger and, like, mo- than most guards and stuff. So. Yeah, he's basically he's just nice. promoting. Okay, so we have James Harden going to Philly. We have Kyrie oh, going, staying in Philly. Kyrie staying in Dallas. For Kyrie, we basically said it. I mean, bro. You gave up all that capital for Kyrie. You're not just going to let him walk because you're left with absolutely nothing. Yes. They got to bring back Kyrie and try to at least make it work. I think if you let – I don't know what they're going to do with Christian Wood. I'd probably – I don't know. How much money do they have? If they re sign Kyrie, I think they only have about, like, no money left. So they'd have to just get, like, mid-level exception guys. You can move Tim Hardaway Jr., Maybe he's on. He's on a pretty big deal. I think he's oh, making like fifteen. He's I don't know that in forever. Dallas, but I heard like the Derek. Who was Derek Lively, the center? Um, I heard he's like barely gonna play his first year. Like I thought that was just dumb. Um, if I'm Dallas, though, with that remaining money I do have, I think I'd go sign just a defender, literally just a defender. Yeah, one. a three and D guy. Because my for the Mavericks still stand. You can make Kyrie and Luca work if three through five can play defense and just let Kyrie and Luca do the entire offense. The perfect, the perfect, the perfect guy for the Mavs would be Jeremy Graham. Like I think he'd be really good. Uh, He's gonna, he's gonna make too. He's gonna command too much money in the offseason. I don't think. I know, I know. I just like uh, Dame needs to leave Portland. But anyway, I would just find a wing. Matisse Seibel would be great, but I think Philly could. He's not in Philly anymore. He's in he's Portland. Not, he's in Portland. Literally, I think, literally, I think he's he, he hasn't been in Philly since though. like 2017. No, he just got traded this season. He got traded this season. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I think literally a worse version of free agent, Jared, though. So, um, literally a worse version of Jared Vanderbilt. Maybe yeah, but, Dylan Brooks. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Not Dylan I would, Brooks. I, dude, I would get that entire team to to be straight defense, straight defensive wings. Use that mid level exception. Everything you have just to get defense. Okay, let's move on rather quickly here. We got Fred Van Vliet. I, I think he's going to the Rockets. option from yeah. Toronto. He's probably going to look for a payday. I think I think the Rockets is the most valuable option for him. The Rockets, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have to use 90% of your cap by, in the season, and they have like $60 million or something like that. They got to sign somebody, and he's looking for a big payday. He, he's the best option. Who do you have there? Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green. Like – I don't know. The Rockets are in a tricky spot because you want to give these guys room to develop and to grow, but you don't want to stunt their growth. But at the same time, you got to sign somebody. You can't just roll out there with sixty million not attended for. So I think he's going to end up going to the, to the Rockets. I think he'd be a good player. Actually, Fred Van Vliet is an interesting player in the fact that he's not a bad player, but he's not a needle mover to me. Like I don't see Fred Van Vliet as this guy that when he like he's a trade piece, a key piece. Like he go to the Rockets, he'll be riddled in irrelevancy for the next year and a half, and then he'll fucking I don't know retire or something, and we'll never hear from him again. So I think Fred Van Vliet is like – I think he'll end up going to Houston. I'd agree with the Rockets. Yeah, yeah I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah. $50 million. Uh, I think if, out of all the teams who would sign Fred Van Vliet, they would be the team most likely to give Fred Van Vliet the contract that he wants. I think Fred Van Vliet might be trying to get 30 to $35 million this offseason. I heard I 40, bro. I heard 40. I know. I think that's what – that's why he declined his option because I think he can – think he truly believes – that he can go out on the market and get thirty to thirty-five million. I think he's more of a twenty-five to twenty to thirty million guy, not a thirty to thirty-five million guy. Definitely not forty. Oh my god! If I see if I see Houston, if Woj gets my tweet and I see Houston Rockets sign Fred Van Vliet four years, each year is like what four, thirty-eight, forty million dollars. I'm gonna explode, and that might be the worst contract in NBA history. Yeah, that'd be a bad contract. I think he shoots like below forty percent. I mean, uh, he can hoop. I don't think his prime yeah. is going to be that long. So I, I, I think his prime's over. Like, yeah, I think he's past his prime already. I think he's, he's already, already over. I think he's, he's like thirty. Huh? Oh, he's thirty. 
He did. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think he might have spent all four years in college. I might be wrong though. And then he had those few years. I think he was in the G League. Yeah, he was in and out. He was undrafted, yeah, right? Bro, I'm not yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah, yeah. undrafted. Yeah, bro. It's all downhill from here, bro. He was yeah. born in 94. <laughs> he's he's 29 years old. Crunch says it's all downhill from here. <laughs> he was years never years like old. a he was never he was never like a superstar caliber player. Like I think he's he already maxed out. Borderline he was all star last year. He's he was good death. in the championship run too. Like he was actually yeah, he was great. Them. He's the definition yeah. of borderline all star. He's the definition of borderline all star. Yeah, and I just fact checked. He, he spent he man, spent maybe. four years at college at Wichita State. Yep. If he wasn't like five eleven, he would actually be like a superstar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's what it is. He's just too small. Exactly. Like, like, if he player. was like, yeah, if he was like seven four, like Yao Ming, and had like the build of Shaq, I pretty, I feel like he would be pretty good. He's not a bad. Probably, he's not no, 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 no. With his shoot, with his shooting, he can make some plays. The greatest team. player ever. The problem with him is the field goal percentage. When you're shooting sub forty and you're trying to command $40 million, it's going to scare some teams away. Lakers, please, no. no um, he could no. probably be like a Lou Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Lakers, please, no. Um, Fred Van Lee, Houston, Williams, I think bro. everyone could agree. Um, I, I don't know how much cap space like. the Magic have, but I think they have some decent cap. They might be in the market for a free agent. Um, but I think we're green. Fred Van Lee is going to be a rocket. The Rockets, if we talk about post uh, offseason leverage, they have by far the most. Oh, yeah, by far. It's not even close. <laughs> $60 million. Possible rocket here, but we kind of talked about him a little bit earlier. Chris Middleton. Uh, plumber. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he just loves Middleton. Now, no, Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be $40 disrespectful. million dollars from Milwaukee. So it seems like I don't know if he, he – I don't think he's in it truly for the money. So think about it like that. Declines think, 40 mil. I don't think he's in it for the money. I think he's just looking for, for just a better, safer contract. That's what maybe, it is. Maybe take lesser money to run it back with Milwaukee. I think the signs are pointing that he comes back to Milwaukee. What, do, what about you guys? Do you guys have anything different than Milwaukee? No, mm. I think he's staying. I think Mark Stein reported that Milwaukee's probably going to bring him and Brooke Lopez back. I think he was just looking for a longer-term deal. Um I love him on the Lakers, you know, but they can't afford him. And what other team, like you know, like can he go to maybe Miami? I don't think I don't think that he can afford him either. So uh, I'm kind of being biased here to my teams, but I really what, what else? Like like what other teams have cap space? The thing about this offseason, there's like eight teams with real cap space, and everybody else is just kind of in the in, in nowhere land. Yeah. Like like there's really not many teams that can sign players. So I think Chris Middleton is just looking for a longer term deal to me at least. But I, I see him staying in Milwaukee. The well, it's Super also, Maxes it's also, are doing the worst things. To yeah. Happen. Well, there's, there's a reason why, like, most of these teams, like, don't have cap is because, like, they already signed, like, most of their players. So yep. that's why and that's why NBA money is, is growing a lot way too than fast. Like others. Also, bro, that new that new CBA is legit. And the second ap- – once that second apron hits, bro, teams are going to have – like, you're going to be losing you're mid-level cooked. exception. You're they're they're fucked. It's that's a real thing. Head. No, Yo, but, like – I think it's kind of funny that Grant Williams was doing the CBA talks. Um, But – No, is but – yeah, because I'm pretty sure Grant Williams – is Grant Williams like the president of the Players Association or something? I think he's vice president. I think he's vice, yeah, president, vice president of the Players Association. No, no, but when Grant I Grant Williams. All right, next. Jeremy, when, I see Chris, when I see Chris Middleton, he just looks like a player from the 60s that Matt would adore. Yeah, he looks like Nate Thurmond. <laughs> he does not look like Nate – okay, okay, no, no, no. He does not look like Nate Thurmond. Nate Thurmond, uh, Nate Thurmond was jacked at 25 five. years old. You can look up the pictures. This man's wearing a chain while he's playing basketball. He's nothing like Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton is going to run it back with the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, this is a guy who I think is going to run it back with this team. I'm just on the far lesser deal. Please, no Lakers. Draymond no, Green. No Lakers. <laughs> if you guys get Draymond Green, you guys are fucked. No, no, no. He's not yeah, a no. Laker. I'm Dr- Draymond and LeBron that's in the basic, locker room is going to be like five basic, months every, every, every day. Out the window. He traded that's the basic. dude. He traded the, he traded the Michigan kid that he was beefing with and punched over the offseason. He's going to come back on a lesser deal. I think Golden State understands – that throughout their entire dynasty, they win the most when he is in the lineup, although he's declining. I think Jordan Montgomery understands that and will take a lesser deal and come back and be a warrior. Uh, no, I'm, just, I'm just saying if the, if, if the Lakers get Jordan I see a purple and gold jersey crossover one more time. I'm going to explode. Uh, Draymond Green 
Anthony Davis, Jared Vanderbilt, all time great four spacer, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Jared Vanderbilt is literally just the worst version of Draymond Green. Yeah, he's he's terrible. And he can even play make like Draymond Green. I, I think Draymond Green, like if people were talking about Sacramento, I don't like Draymond Green is an all time player. P- people who don't see the value in him, I don't understand that. He's obviously a valuable player for a championship team. To me, he's one of the best, you know, passing forwards that in the game has ever seen. He's a great playmaker too. But, like, dude, Chris Paul and Draymond Green on the same team, it's kind of, like, it's redundant. They kind of do the same shit. Kind of, not really because Draymond Green has a defensive element. And he's had that clip talking shit about how he hates CP. So that was kind of weird, too. I don't know how that's going to vibe. But I think Draymond Green, is he needs to go back to the Warriors. I think you got to give him one more shot with his court. I would get rid of Clay Thompson if you can. I don't think Clay Thompson's a player that I needs to be. I think that's the next year thing. Uh, exactly. But this year, you could probably get some good pieces for him. And, you know, he wants a max deal, which is insane. If Clay Thompson thinks he's getting a max – that's ridiculous. I don't know where he's getting that the information only, from. The only Max Clay Thompson's going to get is that new streaming service called Max. Um, you said Sacramento. I heard the Sacramento rumors. That would be the biggest mid front court ever of Demonte Sabonis and Draymond Green. Yeah, that'd be I, terrible. And Harrison that, Barnes, like no, 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 no. Harrison the Barnes, thing. the bonus Draymond front court is the biggest mid front court in NBA history. Um, if if Draymond goes to Sacramento, that would be the biggest like. Like that, that would be so ironic because I don't know if y'all heard, but when Jordan Poole got punched by Draymond, it's because Jordan Poole said something to him like, you're going to be playing in Sacramento next true? year. Were those true? I, I heard about those. Were I those heard true? about it too, but if it's true, that would just be ironic. Yeah, that'd were be those crazy. those comments true? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. But, dude, like he I, must have said some shit to him because to deck a motherfucker like that in the mouth, like that, you got to say some different type of shit. But Draymond's like, didn't he punch some kid at Michigan State too? Like he's known for – like he loves he loves getting into a good brawl, bro. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but there's not there's not a real market. For, and also, he stepped on some bonus. Like why yeah, would they tough. bring him to Sacramento? You want to talk about him beefing with Jordan Poole? He's going to beef with some bonus throughout entire offseason practice. Like – no, I wouldn't he, want some bonus. And he, I, the reason why I brought up Harrison Barnes is that he talked about with Damian Lillard how him and Harrison Barnes don't get along because Harrison Barnes thinks he's the reason why Kevin Durant went to the Golden State Warriors and he's not there anymore. So they didn't he didn't invite him to his wedding. He invited like everybody on the Warriors except Draymond Green. So it's just gonna be even That's fucking right. more awkward, bro. Hey, okay, Draymond's still a question. Harrison Barnes like the really real thinks he's for Draymond Green is just GS. And like I said, I think he's gonna understand that and take a far less deal. If you're Houston, if you're like I heard San Antonio, if you're a young team, like why, like why would Houston give up some money for Draymond? Like why? Doesn't make I wouldn't sense. want Jabari Smith Jr. minutes going away for Draymond. Like why? It would just if Draymond goes to Houston, like it would just ruin the rebuild. Yep. Just uh, why? Like, and why? I don't think he's an Ime Udoka type player. I don't think him and Ime Udoka would get along. Vucevic was on this, but I'm pretty sure he's most likely going to go back to the definition of NBA purgatory, which is the Chicago Bulls. I think they're going to re-sign him on a massive yep. three-year deal, which is just absolutely disgusting. Um, the Bulls just think – the Bulls proven yet again that they are a Michael Jordan merchant and can't do anything without <laughs> Michael Jordan. They are pretty close with Derrick Rose. But other than that, speaking of brick – Chicago's had a fat brick wall. <laughs> Lonzo Ball's not going to play next season, and you're locking in Vucevic. He's off this list now. Um, now we talked about Brooke Lopez. I don't think we have to go back into it. We want him to come to the Lakers, but it looks like to everyone, unless you guys think he's going to be a rocket, I think most of us agree he's probably going to run it back with Milwaukee. Yep. I don't know how that contract's going to work, though. Brooke Lopez might have to take – do you think Brooke Lopez takes a little less money to come back to Milwaukee? Because it seems like – I don't know if he can get his peak money in Milwaukee, to be honest. Uh, hell peak. Like peak money as in like the most money he could like possibly get based on his value. I don't know if he can get that for Milwaukee. I think he's looking to get like 18 million a year. That's what I heard somewhere. I think that's what like what he's looking for. Can but... they afford that? Can they afford that? Dude, honestly? they're paying a lot because I think they're paying Giannis the max. They're paying Drew Holiday. I think the max are close to the max. And you got Chris Middleton who just opted out, but he's going to want near damn damn near a, a pretty high. Like he's going to want to make over thirty mil a year probably. So that's pretty. It's, you're allocating a lot of your cap to star players. So I don't know if you can bring if you can afford to bring back next year. Program. Next forty five million dollars uh, to Giannis, thirty six to Drew Holiday. Yeah. Um. So how much money is that? I think. Can I take this off? 
How much money is that? Uh, yeah, that's what's the cap? What's the NBA cap? I think it's like one. It's like is it one seventy? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I mean they got about eighty, ninety million dollars into one. They got eighty million dollars into two players. Chris Milton comes back for what thirty million dollars. Brooke Lopez comes back for fifteen. That's forty-five million dollars. I don't know how they're gonna afford that, but I'd say Brooke Lopez most likely wants to go back to Milwaukee. But if but if if Milwaukee can't get the contract situation figured out, I'd say he's a Houston Rocket if they can't figure out the money. Yeah, that only makes sense. It makes sense. The Rockets, the the money they have, bro, they got to pay somebody. And Brooke Lopez is, you know, no state tax. That probably wants to lure him in there too. Okay, we're 50 minutes in. We got to hurry this up. D'Angelo Russell, we talked about him earlier. Uh, I think the Lakers are running back with him. I think the Lakers are going to run back with D'Angelo Russell, unfortunately. Um, what about you guys think he's going anywhere else or do you think he's a Lakers? I think he's staying with us I, I think he's staying with the Lakers too just because like they're familiar like like they're familiar with him and I just don't see him going anywhere else and unless the team offers him a stupid contract which I don't I, I don't see that happening yeah, yeah I, I think he stays with the Lakers I think okay, two more guys with. here Russell Westbrook I mean oh, he, he, like, Lakers I think the best not scenario sure. not doing another year with Russell Westbrook. No, <laughs> no, I think, no. I think that I think a best I think a I think the best scenario for Russell Westbrook if he goes to like a great spacey team, like if he goes back to the Clippers, like I don't know. Now but Kieran, how much money is Westbrook commanding? They can only offer him the mid level. That's all they can offer him. No, here's my th- here's my thing. Before the Bradley Beal trade. If they got off Chris Paul, like let's say they traded him not for Bradley Beal, I was saying like, hmm, maybe he could be fine on the Suns because they have this space to do it. But now they can't get him. No, they can't. And I think I think you can. I think the Clippers can only offer him the vet, vet minimum, which he's probably not going to take. He looked good with the Clippers last year. I think he showed some flashes. Obviously in the playoffs, he was a pretty good player. But the thing with Russell Westbrook is that. He's always going to look good when he has mediocre players around him. I don't think he's a player that can contribute to a championship-winning team. Um, and, you know, Brooklyn maybe. I don't think Brooklyn has some caps. So he can go to Brooklyn. You know, he, he can be a good sideshow of Brooklyn. Uh, the Jazz, you know, uh, but he has some beef with the Jazz fans because we know that they're fucking probably racist as shit. So I don't think he wants to go there. Um, probably the understatement. Yeah. Like, like, fuck you know, Utah. Yeah, fuck Utah. Austin Finn, good. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's even worse, bro. It's not even the Jazz; it's just Utah. Yeah, the, the Utah in general. So I think I don't think he would go to Utah. Uh, but I don't think, dude. Like, here's the thing: if I was Russell Westbrook and I've made, I think he's made like three hundred million dollars in NBA contracts. I'd be like, fuck it, I want a chance to win. I'll stay with the Clippers. But then again, I'm not Russell Westbrook, and he probably wants more money, so he's probably gonna look for a day, he can get a decent payday. Maybe Indiana can they afford him? I don't think they can. I don't know why they would bring him in, but you know, maybe Tyrese and Westbrook backcourt. Maybe that could be pretty cool. I think – wait, let me ask Crunch. Crunch, if you're still with us, you. where do you think Westbrook goes? I mean, I heard I heard it with – I mean, I heard some people saying he kind of wanted to be Phoenix. Um, I think but he stays in the Clippers, Bradley though. Bill looks kind of over now. Yeah. Unless he takes the vet minimum, though. No? I don't think Westbrook's going to take the vet minimum. It's probably Especially not to play with KD. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Miami or, you know, um, I could see I'm Miami maybe bringing him in. He can't shoot, though. No. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think if Miami loses Max Struess and uh, Caleb Martin, it's going to be a lot of spacing that they're going to miss. Miami needs to go for Damian Lillard. We need to get rid of Tyler Hero, that's and we need to go get Damian Lillard. We need, go, we need to go get Damian Lillard. I don't know what that's the what fuck he's – I, I don't know what he's doing in Portland. It's just a matter on whether so Lillard wants to stay in Portland or not. Okay, so Dave, I don't know why he would. I'm asking, oh, yeah, I'm asking, I don't know why he would either, but he's giving every indication man. that he let might want to still man. stay. So Damian Lillard – that was a good transition to the next topic. So Damian Lillard, obviously, the rumors. I don't know about you guys. I'm tired of these rumors. Yeah, just it's say you're getting traded. We're just say you're staying. Stop oh. with the stop with the in the club. Listen to the Miami yeah. song from Will Smith. Stop with that, bro. Stop with all this. Just say you're staying or leaving. 
as a Miami fan, you probably have the biggest headache out of everyone here because he's not going to be a Laker. He's not going to be a Cav. Those are the guys, the teams I root for. Miami's been in this team Lillard thing for a long time. Yeah. So this might this be a my problem because you kind of already answered the first part. So for Miami, do you believe Dame is the only option really in this offseason? Are you asking me? Yeah. I think – I mean, look, when I see Miami, people got to remember, we didn't have Victor Oladipo or Tyler Hero for the whole finals, and we still made it to the finals. I think if those guys are there – I'm not saying they win this series, but I think it's a different series. So I think Miami can compete even without Damian Lillard. But if we're looking to be a valuable – like if we're looking to be the favorites, be over Boston and Milwaukee, I think Damian Lillard is the only option. I think him, Bam, and Jimmy Butler would be instantly one of the best th- trios in the, in the league. I think you can Sheesh. argue top three. And I think that Damian Lillard – like, dude – if you're looking at the Blazers, they have Afrini, Afrini Simons, they have Shaden Sharp, and they just drafted Scoot Henderson. Like, you, who are you gonna? You're gonna have a three guard lineup and then roll out who? Uh, Jeremy Grant and Nasir Little. Like, like what is the? There's there is no winning in Portland. It's just like drifting into oblivion. So to me, he has to request a trade, and I think Miami would be the best place for him. Uh, obviously, if he can go to Milwaukee, but that's not gonna happen. Uh, he can go to Philadelphia. You can pair him up with Joel Embiid and maybe James Harden. If James Harden leaves, you bring him in. But um, I think Damian Lillard, I'm, dude, it's, he, he needs to do something for his career because he's an all-time great talent. He's one of my favorite players of all time. And him not winning a championship and just staying over there, it's going to ruin his legacy, let's, bro. It's just let's gonna, be it's, honest people... about Miami. In the last four years, they've been to three Eastern Conference finals, two finals. They haven't yep. won a single one of those finals. They need that and guy. To me, I think they've overachieved in every single one of those seasons. Yep. Except last year, maybe. Last year, they were a pretty good last team. Last year, maybe. But I still don't think they were the real one seed. I kind of think they overachieved in the regular season. I yeah. think this is a very good team that needs one final piece to get over that hump. Yes. Or at least make that hump easier to climb. Mm-hmm. And Damian Lillard, to me, for Miami would be – I think he's the only answer in their offseason. I think he – I mean, you're the Heat fan, so you've probably been like actually like deep diving deeper in the offseason for the Heat. I've mostly been looking for the Lakers and the Cavs. And when you think about your offseason options for the Heat, there's not much. No, there's actually really, really just not much. Not anything. And I think, dude, like you got Kyle the Lowry. Struggle, the Heat need a guard. They need a real yes. point guard, a yes. point guard that can get you some buckets, a dynamic score alongside Jimmy Butler who can help them in postseason runs. Because yep. if Jimmy Butler's not scoring, Who's that dynamic score in that postseason for you guys? Duncan Robinson. Damn. Like, you need more buckets on that Miami Locked team. Too, you man, want to be for real serious and actual legit yeah. team that isn't just overachieving. You put Dame on that roster, like you said. You get defense. You get great score. Not from Dame, but bam, that big three has defense and scoring. It's a nasty big three. That would be a nasty big three. And the best part is you can hide some of Dame's liabilities off defensively because you have two elite defenders and well Jimmy. Well, Jimmy's yeah, Jimmy's an elite defender. And yeah. Jimmy and Bam. So He's a top five wooden defender. Yeah. Yeah. He I think so. I think Jimmy and Bam, they can kind of guard the other team's best player. And you know, J- Dame can kind of be left to guard an, um, another guy who's not really a threat. So to me, Damian Lillard's the option. I think he's one of the best players in the league. I think he he will make the, the heat. Jimmy Butler. Uh, that's a tough game. He's better than I Jimmy think, Butler. Yes, yeah, I think he is. I think he is. Come postseason, like, cause yeah. dude, last time we saw Damian Lillard in the postseason, he was putting up a fucking masterpiece against Denver and like double overtime. Dude's a playoff performer. Like that's Damian Lillard is a certified playoff player, but he doesn't get a chance to play because he's the fucking team sucks, so he never gets into the playoffs. So I think Damian Lillard on the Heat will be. That was in 2021. I think Dame is on and off in the playoffs, but that's just me. But like he's. I think I think he's a good playoff performer. Um, I think he. But, I was going to talk about it later, but I think he. I want to give my rant on Damian Lillard. I am he's so a first round playoff performer. I am so fucking tired of seeing Damian Lillard in trade talks for like the last three years. Like, dude, just like fucking leave. Like, uh, you you didn't have to sign that extension. You could have just fucking left, and Portland would like started the rebuild earlier. But now you're still in Portland. I just don't <laughs> want you. In this fucking situation where you have Scoot Anderson, like fucking Anthony Simons, and like Dude, all the chill with the ball. F, bomb, it's bro. fucking stupid. Like chill with the F, bomb, bro. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Damian Lillard be that guy. It's like, oh yeah, Damian Lillard was a great player, but yeah, you're the biggest loser in NBA history. I don't want to see that, bro. Okay, yeah. Karen. Karen, quick question. Like, what? Are, are are you angry about any of this at all, Damian Dude, Lillard? We're so pressed, bro. I'm more passionate than angry. Right. Passion. It's the love uh, of the game. But if we're, like we said, Dame to Miami, 
I think we talk about the Eastern Conference. I think they're better than Philly if they can get Dan. Oh, yeah. And we're really pushing conversations of what they can do. We've seen what they can kind of do to Milwaukee already with the build. Stop Giannis. They've been Giannis's biggest nemesis. They've been doing a better job than Boston as far as guarding Giannis and slowing him down a bit. They can really compete with Milwaukee if they get Dame. And they've seen we beat they've beat Boston twice in two ECFs. They get Dame. I don't know if they could win the finals, but that can definitely get them over the hump at a greater chance. But oh, my thing right. with Dame, I'm gonna do my Dame rant. Uh Kieran uh ripped off the PG 13 title of this podcast. Um said like eight F bombs. Um so now oh, all sorry. my kid audience, all my below 10 years old audience. All right, let's left. be honest. You don't have any 10 year olds watching. Yeah, why would you want that audience anyway? I don't think you want the, the under 10 year old um, audience. They left the stream. They're gone. Um, the kids who are watching my stream, they're gone. They're reporting me to their parents. Um, so, yeah. So, thanks, Kieran. Thanks. But about Dame. We're almost – we're an hour in, so we're going to close out soon. But I want to get this Dame rant off and open the floor to other people. For Dame, I think that whole running from the grind thing that he's so, like, caught up about, I think it's a cover-up, if we're being honest. Yeah. I think Dame instead – is scared to go to a real team because he does not want to play with legit winning expectations. Like I've seen Dame's postseason numbers in series beyond the first round. And let me tell you, they're not that good. And I don't think he wants to go to a team that has a really good chance to push deep in the postseason because if the, if those non first round playoff numbers were to be for a team that has a shot, there'd be no excuses for Dame. Like he gets in Portland, if like like the excuses he gets in Portland just wouldn't be there because it'll just be straight criticism. And I don't think Dame wants that. And I think that's what he's been scared about for a long time and why he hasn't committed to I want out and why he keeps saying I don't want to play for a super team. You just don't want to play for a team that has a legit shot to win. Right. I'm being honest. At this point, dude. Yeah. I, I think like- Dame's a great player and he moves a huge needle for Miami, but dog. Join a good team. Like, yeah, stop a good team. Like, and, and, and Damian Lillard, too, like I said that he was a certified playoff player. I kind of misspoke a little bit because when I think about it, too, like he obviously people bring – like the two shots obviously against Houston and against OKC come to mind. But that series in 2019 where they were in the WCF and it was Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant was out, and it was Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, they had leads in all those – I think in all those – in the halftime at all, of all those games – and he really underperformed in those fourth quarter in, in that second the second half of those games. So when I see a guy like a Damian Lillard, I see a guy that's very talented, but he has his deficiencies, especially defensively. Um, and you know he needs to put more. I think he should put more pressure on the rim. You know I don't think he's rim like that. Pressure. Thing, oh. You know you know so but like Shout I think legend winning. Legend, <laughs> I think um, I, I think Damian Lillard is a great player, but this whole thing like it's the same shit with Bradley Beal, and he's a better player than Bradley Beal. But some guys just want to get their money. And just play basketball for fun. Like they don't even care about making the playoffs. And I think that's kind of where Damian Lillard's at. I don't think he's this. And there's nothing wrong with that, bro. Go make your money. But you can't keep talking about how you want to win it in Portland because you're not going to fucking win it in Portland. Why lie to yourself? Like are you speaking it into existence? It's not going to work. Portland's not going to win a championship anytime soon. Maybe in the ten, in five years time when Afrini, Scoot, and Shane Sharp can maybe like grow into something. But you're going to be 38 by then. Like yeah, are you going to win a ring? Like, on that timeline. Do you want to? Do you want to win? Do you want to win? Do you want to win a Gary Payton ring where you're like fucking forty five and you're not even playing anymore? Like you don't want to do that. You're Damian Lillard, so go to a team that can actually help you win a ring. He doesn't want to go to Boston, by the way, because I think he doesn't like the fans apparently. Thinks, yeah, but I think yeah. he thinks Boston, Boston is a Boston. super team. Don't blame him. Huh? I think he thinks he'll make Boston a super team. No, but like again, like Damian Lillard has given everything to Portland. He just doesn't need to be there anymore. No, it's I'm done. Tired of seeing him in trade talks every year and saying like, "Oh, I want to go to a contender." No, let's just be the biggest loser in NBA history. Yeah, I think Dame no. likes the attention because why wouldn't you just come out and say, "I want to be traded" or "I'm in Portland." Stop asking me. Maybe I think you've said like on and off like maybe like one time like he just when he says I want to stay in Portland, he just doesn't directly say it. He says it like a weird way like. I don't want to run from the grind or something. Like that. Just run from the grind. <laughs> it's come out. Dame, before free agency, because you have Miami by the balls, just come out and tweet, I'm staying in Portland or I'm demanding a trade. That's it, bro. 
and we'll move on. You go waste your talent in Portland, go lose, go miss the playoffs, go get 30 and not play winning basketball or get demand a trade, come to a Miami, come to a formidable team that can actually make deep postseason runs and be a part of that winning franchise. But if not, bro, then say it. Like, I'm tired of this, dude. Like, this is sad. I mean, yeah. I mean, I did see him get swept, though. He got swept by Steph and Clay. And yeah. he was winning. Yeah. He was winning, like, 20 points. I think Portland was winning by, like, 20 points all four of those games. Yeah, they had a pretty good lead, substantial leads in all those games. I- and. Dude, he even lost that year. Remember, like, Anthony Davis year where they had Rondo oh, and they lost? Yeah, they got lost. swept. They yeah, got swept. Bro. Dude, he did really bad. He that was really Drew bad. Holiday. Was really no yeah, really, I was going to say, what if he wins a ring? It was Rondo and freaking Drew Holiday just walking him, dude. Walking him. Like, just outplaying him every single time. And, bro, the thing is, like, we look at that series against Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is a guy who he plays, like, he doesn't play the game. He plays, like, against a player. So, like, he was, like, making it a personal beef between him and Dame. And Russell really kind of played poorly, you know, those games. So, like, when you see that, like, and Damian Lillard obviously hit the shot, but and waved to him, bro. And then, and then waved to him, but and like, Russell I think, Ricky Rubio too. and in the bubble, in the bubble, he was not great against the Lakers. Uh, that, that, he wasn't amazing. They were obviously the eight seed, but right? yeah, he was kind of hurt, but he's the bubble MVP. Yeah, but <laughs> wait, was it a Devin Booker? What is this tweet? What Dame, is this yeah, tweet? tweet? What is it? Dame. Breaking an hour ago, Kyrie will meet with the Suns. Oh my! God. Oh my! Oh goodness. no! Break oh. Chris Haynes an hour Bro, ago. Ky- and wait a minute! Kyrie wait a minute! I need to check. I need to check. Okay. Uh, need to check the the agency period begins June thirtieth. Kevin Durant. How Bro, the hell are they gonna get him? I don't even <laughs> Dude, they're gonna have. Uh, all right, all right. Do, do you remember that scene from Despicable Me where Gru says, "In terms of money, we have no money." That's what the Suns are about to be. He gonna take. They're gonna, gonna give less him money. Like, he gonna take less money and say, "I don't care about the money." If Kyrie gets a vet minimum to join the Suns, I'm. Dude, yeah, yeah, never yeah, I actually don't know man. if they'll be able to afford not see these vet ever minimums. Again. The TikTok being deleted. Okay, okay. We, we will wild. not talk about their depth. Their offense is going to be probably the best in the league because they the the world? Come not on, just man. the league, the best ever. Like, see, but ever. this is what I'm saying, bro. I hate see, man. Listen, bro. <laughs> I don't think he's going to average 19. Crunch, what's your thoughts on this, bro? This is your guy, Kyrie, and you don't. That's like what I'm super saying. Team, I don't bro? like team. Like, I don't like super teams. Well, you I don't like. like well, I don't like unfair super teams. No, you know my here. But then, I mean, problem. they still don't have no defense, though. I'm actually Here's at the point problem. where I still okay. don't even think they would probably win. So how's how does this work? I'm guessing if okay, now this is just a meeting, by the way. This isn't send stone. It's just Kyrie intends to go oh hit God. up Phoenix when the free agency period opens June 30th. So I assume this would have to be a sign and trade with DeAndre Ayton and literally everything Phoenix has for Kyrie Irving. <laughs> this is nuts. Well, well, all they have other than DeAndre Ayton that they're not gonna trade at this point is freaking ish Wainwright. And like, Josh campaign. And Kobe. campaign. They can't, can't what, do they sign, what do they sign like DeMarcus Cousins or something? Dude, they're yeah. going to have to sign Dwight Howard. Oh, Dwight Howard. <laughs> they're going to need to just sign guys that are have been what? retired. Like They're going to sign like Jerry West and Bob Cousy so, for death. No, I heard Avery Bradley. I heard Avery oh. Bradley. They, they could sign Giannis, Bradley. Giannis's brother from Greece is probably going to have to come over. My problem with the Suns is that like, when Bradley Beal got traded, people were like, oh, look, Kevin Durant has another super team. But, like, Kevin Bro, Durant, that's so smart. I don't know what I'm just saying this right now. Declaration on the pod. If I'm sleeping and it's midnight, their free agency opens up, and I get a zzz, zzz, phone buzz, and I look over, and it's Chris Haynes saying Kyrie gets traded for DeAndre Ayton. I'm putting my phone down, not waking <laughs> up, never doing Let's this go podcast Phoenix. ever again. Best point guard. Well, in Phoenix we see Brad as the as the fourth best player on a team. There's no way. That'd be the most loaded jersey. offensive team of all time. A hundred percent. Oh, another tweet from um, an NBA insider: The Lakers are confident in their ability to sign Bruce Brown. Oh, shit. awesome! Awesome! That'd be huge. Oh, wow. That would be huge. That would that would really be huge. He was the most underrated piece for their team this year for the Nuggets. Him and KCP was actually pretty good too. And, and yeah, KCP. Uh, KCP it was solid for the Lakers. The yeah. Lakers, the Houston. I'm reading off just literally Chris Haynes tweets now. The Houston Rockets are emerging as a strong landing spot for Kyle Kuzma. Ugh. Yeah. I forgot Kyle <laughs> Kuzma. I think right. Kyle he Kuzma. was linked to the Suns too. Or just favorite player option. 
Oh, he, Kyle Kuzma declined his option. I, or yeah, he wants to get paid like thirty. He wants to make thirty million. That's what he said. Oh yeah, yeah, he wants to get paid. Yeah, bro, just Kyle like Kuzma. play on the Wizards and you'll average thirty. He's gonna go to the Pacers and he's gonna be a getting the dribble handoffs and simple passes from Tyrese Tyrese Halliburton. Bro, the Suns are about to be the Chiefs of the NFL. Somehow they're just gonna like make it work and side. They want to do it, bro. They get oh, Kyrie. No, no, no. no the Suns are. Good. Uh, I know I said like in the beginning that I don't talk about baseball, but at that point the Suns would literally be the Yankees, where they're just paying everybody for the hell of it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yo, and that's why I'm glad we have a salary cap in the NBA because if we did some MLB stuff, when the big mark, because the Los Angeles Lakers would literally not lose a championship if there was no salary cap. No. By the way, here's the thing though, I don't see the Suns as a super team though. I don't I, like. I think they have like I don't because I don't see the depth there for there to be like when I see a super when I see the Warriors team, you had. Steph, Clay, Draymond, Kevin Durant, and then you had Sean Livingston, who comes in and gives you fucking 50 points, it seems like, from that mid-range jumper that he had. Um, then you had a couple other pieces, you know, like, um, what was his name? The David West. David yeah. West. They had uh, Mo Spades. Yeah, you know, Iguodala. Had you know. Iguodala. I don't oh, see this I, I, I see what you're trying to mm-hmm. say, because, like, you, see, you still see the lack of depth thing. But when people yeah. say super teams and the definition of a super team – it's top heavy. It's the depth, they don't look at the coaching. It's just how many stars you have, and that's where the super team like, term comes from. It's like, do you have three – like Miami Heat, although they had some depth issues at like a season or two, they were considered a super team because of just that big three. Like the right. big stars on your team. Well, you I, think, I, think, I think it was more of a super team back then because I think you needed less depth then than now. True. Um, Pat Riley – still got to the finals, so – Pat but Riley anyway, had a hard time selling um, the Heat's owner on a Bradley Beal trade. So good. good. So if good. the Suns get Kyrie good. Irving, you'll have three top twenty players and another dude who's top like thirty. Andre Drummond's expected <laughs> to sign with the Dallas Mavericks. Multiple rival teams have told me this week that they expect oh, Dallas fun. to come. To oh, awesome! Three. Another wash center that's not going to play any defense oh, for awesome. you anymore. Awesome! Another uh, Moses Malone. Uh, oh my god, god. All right, dude. Okay. Uh, Moses Malone without the scoring. Vucevic wants more touches in Chicago's offense. Okay, and that that's was, awesome. Clippers they're they're going to be screwed. Team and Clippers are a dark horse and Harden sweeps so that. Okay, the Clippers are a dark horse team for who? Harden. How? Like, are they getting rid of Paul George? How the fuck? Do they yeah, they, they would have, have to. Have to get rid of, they would have to get rid of like Paul George or like guys like. And then maybe rid- also like Covington too, since he's getting paid no, like a good amount of money. No, my problem with the Clippers is that I think they're like when they're fully healthy, they're the second best team in the West. But like if they're gonna have to give up their whole bench for James Harden, I would not do that. Yep, and then for Max Drews, the Indiana Pacers are strong. Pacers a three three year forty eight million dollar contract for Max Drews. Mm. Max Drews is one of the best players for the Heat in the playoffs. I think. Um, you know, he was pretty good in the finals. I don't – he's one of those guys, though, that I don't really see his value outside of Miami. Yeah. But I do think that he can make some – like, dude, go get your bag, obviously. But I don't I don't, I don't, don't see his value outside of that Heat system, to me at least. Like, I think he's a guy that thrives on that culture with the Heat. I know that's a kind of a corny term, culture. I fucking hate that term sometimes. But he does kind of thrive in that system. So, um, I don't – like, I don't think the Heat want to bring him back, though. I don't – I think the Heat are the type of team – that they can find a gem in the second round or in like in the undrafted pool and they can just develop him into a fucking, you know, like we saw with Duncan Robinson or or Gabe Benson or, you know, all these other guys. Well, we're an hour and 13 in and I think we had a really good heat, really good discussion. Now I'm going to open the floor really quick because this is my first time talking to you, Mitch. First time talking to you. Um, I know you follow me. I always tell people, when they join the pod, since they follow me, is there any take that you disagree with me? Any take that you've ever seen of mine where you had a problem with? If not, no. But I always every single people. one. Okay, I always open the floor to people um, who uh, have have issues. With my I was. Uh, I mean, the only one that it is, and it's a pretty. It's one we already talked about. I saw your live, and I saw that you had Jordan. Ahead of Braun, and I was I wanted to ask you like, what is your criteria? Why, why do you have? Because I know you're a Braun fan, but what makes you think that Jordan is my is personal better? goat is LeBron Ramon James? But I had to make a consistent criteria right. because if you do TikTok lives and you got nerds who want to just cook you 
Um, you need consistent criteria. Yeah, right. Matt Ray was his hand. Um, you need consistent criteria. And I tell all these other people, it's if you want to put a list out there, you need consistent criteria or else you're going to crumble. Like it, you're going to get cooked because yep. you could have a good argument for why a player is number two. But if the talking points you use for that player to be two isn't holding Don't up to why right. this player is six, then it's not going to work. So I made a consistent criteria, and I think it's very good on how I rank players. But unfortunately, my criteria has What's plugged in point, LeBron though? James. So my criteria is accolades, peak, skill, longevity, and impact well, on winning. Now, they all have different weights and gaps depending on how much the player weights them. Right. And ha- depending how big the gap is. So there could be gaps. Like sometimes, although I try to do on a simple level, since there's five, you need to win three out of the five to be the higher all time. But unless there's a gap that's just so huge, it can overcome something like that. Like a longevity gap can be like really huge. So like, Le- so Jordan has the accolades, more MVPs, more chips, more, right. consi- more significant bronze trophies in his case. His trophy case is bigger. And that's not mm-hmm. even considering the scoring titles. That's like just the MVPs and all that. Um, longevity goes to LeBron. Um, now you can say there's a decent longevity gap, but there's also a decent accolades gap. Peak is close, and you can pick whoever you want on your peak. I'm going with the early 90s Jordan, going with 91, 92, 93 type Jordan. Yeah, I'm going with 91 too. I'm yeah, 91. That. I just think that's just the better basketball player. But LeBron 2013 or 2009, whoever you pick, is very close. Yep. So peak goes to Jordan. So Jordan has accolades, peak, LeBron's longevity. Skill, I'll give to LeBron because I think LeBron's the more well-rounded basketball player, can do more on a basketball court. So he has the skill. So it's 2-2, two, two, and it all comes down to impact on winning. And you think Jordan had a higher one? And I just think Jordan – well, I think Jordan had the better NBA Finals. I think 93 NBA Finals is the best NBA Finals ever. So I got the better NBA Finals, got better postseason runs, tougher conferences – more postseason resilience, and no postseason drop-off like a 2011. It always comes back to yeah. moments like 2011 and 2007. Well, it's not even that. Like, uh, like I personally – like, for me, like, I would take the best ceiling raiser of all time or the best floor raiser. <laughs> Basically, yeah. a ceiling raiser is, like, making good teams championship-level teams. And like a four is just making bad teams look good. Team. I think LeBron James is the better floor raiser, but no, 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 no. LeBron is the best floor raiser of all time. It's it's either him, him or Magic, but I I I value like making good teams championship teams more. So that's what that's like one of my reasons why I picked Jordan. So like the thing for me is like here's this, and this is why uh, I was talking to them before uh, Kieran, right? Sorry, yeah, uh, yeah Kieran. Yeah. So. Before you joined, I was telling him how I thought you didn't like me because you made a video. And by the way, when I said – when you stitched my video, I, when I was talking about cringe goofballs, I was not talking about you. I was talking about um, this guy called uh, – what the fuck is his name? I think his name is Katie's Burner on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Basically, like, he made, like, the first 20 minutes of the video just talking about how LeBron's my daddy and how he's my sugar dad. And I was like, bro, if, if you want to talk about your homosexual fantasies with me and LeBron, do that on another – like, you don't have to do that. Like, <laughs> send it to me through DM. You don't have to do that shit on your fucking account. But the thing for me is, in one of the videos that you stitched that you were t- like one of the like I, I don't if like everything Stephen just said I, I accept right I disagree with a lot, some of it but I accept what he's saying. My yeah. problem is when people talk like they use inconsistent criteria when they talk about like Michael Jordan never like because I hate the fact that people act like Michael Jordan's career was six years and that really pisses me off. And when people talk yeah. about how, like. Michael Jordan, and then that's the point I was making in that video when I said, why does Michael Jordan need teammates to win? Like in, in the early 80s, that's why I said he was Tracy McGrady because oh, Michael okay. Jordan Michael Jordan is a guy who obviously needed teammates to win because everybody needs teammates to win. But when I make that argument for LeBron, people are like, well, he's, he's the GOAT. He should win every time. Well, it doesn't work like that because before Michael Jordan got Scottie Pippen, he was going up, in, going up against historic teams and he was losing. But we saw that his talent was there and he was pr- producing. So when I see LeBron and he's losing to the Warriors in 2015 and he's losing to the Warriors in 2018 and he's losing to, you know, the Spurs in 2014 and I see that those are better teams and LeBron's supporting cast wasn't there, I'm like, why don't we use the same criteria for LeBron that we use for Jordan? That's my problem. We always I don't have count LeBron. those against LeBron. Right. Like, I don't, I'm not one of those dudes who say, he's got six NBA Finals losses. I don't do right. that. Well, like, I just my, see, thing about yeah. Jordan, my thing about Jordan. Jordan's got the greater like, performance. 
I think Jordan's got the better postseason resilience. And that's valid criteria. I respect that. LeBron, LeBron has more of a sample worst, size, though, like in in the big games. Yes, as, I think as he's got the worst. He's well, got the worst drop off compared to Jordan. Um, yeah, yeah, Mitch. Like, uh, so like I didn't know if you were like like since like we're talking like you're pretty cool, dude. Like. TikTok is like way different like thing, but like yeah, bro. I, look, by the way, just I don't want to cut you off. I don't take like at the end of the day, it's all sports. Like it's not, yeah. it's not personal. You get what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like when I when I when you said Michael Jordan's like the trace, I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Jordan was Tracy McGrady before he got Pippen. But bro, I really take pride in not being a view baiter. I really, I, I won't consider myself. I, like obviously views are cool, but I don't consider. I don't want to be a view baiter. I hate those people. Yeah. You know, like I, I actually because I feel like I'm pretty consistent with my criteria. Here's my argument for LeBron since okay. 2011. Since 2011, right? And you guys can disagree with this. I think he's had, and you can talk about the finals losses. I think since 2011, you're looking at the great, one of the greatest, probably to me the greatest stretch in NBA history. What he's been able to accomplish since that, like 2011 was bad, okay? I was there for game three in, in Miami. Um, no, game three, yeah, game three was in Miami. It was bad, okay? He was, a, he was bad that series. But, like, since then, he's been, like, what he's accomplished is extraordinary, bro. You're looking at a guy who made the finals with Ronnie Hood, George Hill, and Jordan Clarkson. And I understand the East was weak, but that Pacers team had, um, it had Victor Oladipo, it had Miles Turner, it had, um, uh, what was his name? It had, um, Sabonis. Sabonis still had Sabonis. He was a young player still. And then he went through the Raptors, who people look at as a meme now. But Dwayne Casey had just won Coach of the Year. The Raptors were better than Cleveland. And the Raptors because, were also favored in that series. And they were favored in that series. Yeah. Like, what you, dude, to me, it's Boston. What puts him over there just a Boston series where – Oh, my God. Down, Don't they, remind they, me of that series, dude. Bro, they, they're down 2-0. Uh, and this motherfucker comes back and wins fucking four out of, four out of the next um, – no, three out of the next four. No, what would it be? It'd be four out of the next five or whatever it is. Whatever yeah, the fuck it is. I don't have to I'm blanking right now. You know what's crazy about that Boston series? If you, if you look past game one – that dude was averaging forty-one points a game. Yeah, he was on one through seven. You know, so I don't, I don't mean to like. I know people think that I'm just this huge glazer, but I really do have reasoning as to why LeBron's the goat. Like, I think, I think your reasoning is fair. I, I think, think yeah, and I think it is too. Like, obviously, I think every fucking player needs teammates. That's the whole point of a team sport. Like, oh yeah, one hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like, so pieces. This is why I don't think I don't want to get into football. But what people talk about, like, oh, Tom Brady, he won by himself. No one looks at the defenses he's had. You know, Tom Brady had elite defenses for most of his time. That's why I think of a guy like Aaron Rodgers. If I'm going off peak, I think Aaron Rodgers oh, yeah. is a better peak than Tom Brady because Aaron Rodgers was able to produce with those defense. Like people, like the Atlanta game, like that. Mo- like that was one of the like the Atlanta game of the 2016 NFC Championship game. Yeah, yeah. Rodgers yeah. couldn't do anything in that game. Couldn't do anything. Only bro. Rodgers what do you do? They can't, my, they can't my thing about the, my thing about that game is that like that Falcons offense was so freaking good. It was historic. It was and insane. They had underrated defense too. Yeah, game was pretty and, much over off the job. In the Falcon game, people always talk about Tom Brady and the comeback. Yeah, that's true. He didn't have Gronk that game. But, dude, that defense, like, they made some big-ass plays in that second half that really – like, the Dante Hightower fumble, that flipped the game. That's what won in the game. But you also need defense to come back in games. It's pretty much impossible. Right. Um, it's what you need. Yeah, so, but like – Tom Brady the, probably has the best resilience ever, too. And I think yes. – I don't you want to argue Joe Montana. Like, you, that's why – just know my Brady criteria. So, I don't really value, like, accolades as much as casual – Um but I value peace. I value Ash was an accolade merchant. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I I value I value peak. I do value longevity. I value offense and defense. Like I think like I value like sixty percent of offense and like forty percent of defense. Um, and then I value playoff resilience and then like ceiling raising and floor raising. Right. So, that's a good question. Dude, like, for example, I was on uh, – sorry, I, I'll let you go, see, but like, just real quick. I was on uh, Player's Choice Open Gym a couple months back with Mars – and yeah. he's actually – Mars is one of the, honestly, brightest minds of basketball I've ever heard talk. Like, he really understands the game, like, way more than me. Not like, anymore. He O's, really just trolls now. It's like, yeah, X, yeah I, he does a bunch of trolling things. But X is an O's. Like, he, now. It's like, he bro, understands more than that, dog. <laughs> he it's understands. Actually, and, he, and he was telling me that he takes no accolades into account. And to me, that's kind of silly. I think you should factor in some accolades. But I do think that when you look at LeBron, I think we can all agree LeBron should have more than four MVPs. I think we I can agree. agree. I agree. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And he should have a deep boy. Like Marcus Saul yeah. over LeBron, really didn't even make second team all all defense. I think, made... I think like, don't matter to me when my, I talk about accolades, team. Merchant. By the way, I'm talking about championships, MVPs of this league. Deep all boys don't necessarily matter to me because like um, they don't really need. The, they, they don't. I don't really at, see like Deep Boy being like the best defender in the league unless I re- truly. Also, when I value accolades, 
I value like if I truly believe that accolade was yours. Like if I believe like if I think someone got robbed, I'm not right because at the end of the day they were voted by somebody else. So I just put it in context too. When when I'm looking at like the three greatest players of all time, I think of, of all all three of them at least should have eight. I think at least, like I think I think Kareem deserves eight. Um, I think MJ deserves eight, and I think LeBron deserves eight, and I think that's fair. Like, like those are the three greatest players of all time. Like, I mean, like eighty nine Jordan is arguably his best regular season ever. And he did not win MVP. Like, yeah, who won a Magic? Right? It was Magic. Yeah, Magic. Yeah, 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 Magic, Magic won it back to back, back to back. And I think Braun in twenty twenty, if the season wasn't got, wouldn't have gotten cut because of COVID, I think he would have won it over Giannis. And I think the Derrick Rose here. Where he didn't even finish second, he actually finished third. Dwight Howard finished second. It's that was wild, by the way. Yeah, it's wild. But I think that LeBron should have won it that year too. Obviously, the playoffs came after him. We yeah. saw what happened to him. I but, think. Um, I, I mean, yeah. And 20, dude, 2018 was to me a robbery. Uh, LeBron, think, so LeBron doesn't think, get enough I think credit the years for. That, um, LeBron doesn't get enough credit for winning four MVPs. I, in five I think years. the I think the years that LeBron deserves MVP is 2011. Um, he won in 2012, 2013, 2014. I'll give 2015 16 to Curry because like I'm not giving him 2014. I'm not giving him 2014. Um, over Durant, you. you think he should have won it over Durant? 20, no, 2017. Maybe he wins that in 2014. 2017. Is this is if this is just regular season? Call, call me crazy. I'm giving it to, giving Kawhi. to Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving it to Kawhi Leonard as well. Yeah. Um, 2019 he was hurt. 2020. 2017 the argument for Kawhi. Yeah. What? Yes. Yes. 2017. Give it to second. Kawhi. He finished second. Um, 2017 Kawhi is underrated, but um, yeah, he was good. Uh, Second best 20, season by Kawhi. 2020, I can see the argument for LeBron. So that's about like eight MVP. 2017, right she went to James Harden. I mean, that's a big what if though. What if Kawhi Leonard doesn't get hurt against the Warriors? They were up in that game one. You know what happens if he doesn't get Dude. hurt? He was he was uh, awesome that year. He was a pretty he was a really good player. I think Kawhi Leonard, peak for peak, you can argue he has one of the best peaks in NBA history, honestly, because what he does when he's right. Bro, just this playoffs. He was amazing. He was the best player in the playoffs for two games. Why not winning that over James Harden? Um, um, I, James Harden in 2017? Uh, are you yeah. sure you're getting the years right? Are you thinking yeah. about 2018? 2018 no, James Harden in 2017 was 29, 8, and 11. That's okay. Are you talking about Westbrook's year, the one he won in 2016? Yeah, 17, it was really Westbrook versus for me, Harden. For me, okay. was I was like third. fifth on that MVP ladder. Like, I think LeBron deserved it over him. I thought Harden did. No, he was fourth because, like, like yeah, LeBron, Harden, and Kawhi. I thought they were all better. But. I thought that was Harden's MVP. I don't. I I have a. I don't know what you guys feel, but I don't. I really don't value Russell Westbrook as a player that much. I think his peak is. <laughs> I think his peak is extremely overrated, and I think he's not a guy who contributes to winning at a high level. To me, at least, yeah, like, I, I, just, no, I don't no, think no. Russell. Bro, people, yeah, forget, yeah. people forget about that Jazz series, like oh, the oh, first year that Camarlo oh, yeah. and Paul George were there. He was terrible, bro. Like, he was a bad player. And that was a good team. Like, Paul George, Carmelo, you know, it wasn't a great team. but And he was really bad. And then the next year against the Trailblazers, he just collapsed completely. He made it a personal hey, battle you know between him and Dame. You know what's sad about that Jazz series? Paul Paul George was arguably worse. Yeah, he was so bad, bro. He had, like, four points in one game, right? Ooh, 16? Yeah. yeah. Game. Yo, this is so Paul bad. George, by the way. The, 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 that's the thing. Like, if, if if my file for my like all time players was, wasn't corrupted, like I could tell you where I have Westbrook right now. But like, I'm gonna need to like try my best to restart the whole thing. Yeah, I'm what, we but about but it. the thing, but, but like, I'm pretty sure I had Russ like at 53, I'm what, and I'm I think like the, the the arguments that I hear for Russ are ridiculous because it's kind of like, well, where do you have Russ? Because Oscar Robertson should be in that same range because he broke Oscar. Ro- that's not how it works. Uh, it's not okay. Relative to era, Oscar Robertson like wipes Russ. It's not even close. Like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could give Russ like the playmaking, the rim pressure and the um I wouldn't even say playmaking. Like like uh, Oscar Robertson's one of this the best term rim done. pressure, man. Oh my God. He gets oh. used who Yo, invented that word Katie. and why is he getting wait, 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 wait. Where's Katie's rim pressure? Okay, thank you. It's worse than Max Drews in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that graphic? It was so bad. Draymond Green, Yeah. Man. Yeah, but like, what well, my thing about Westbrook is that like when the playoffs came around at his like during his prime, I just never liked what I saw from him. Like he was put like don't get me wrong, like in 2017, he his MVP yeah. season, he was putting up like like good base stats in the playoffs. But when I'm watching these games, like I'm not seeing him move off the ball that much. I know that he was in like a bad situation. I still don't like this like what what he was doing on the floor. Yeah. Um, it's like the 25 shots like. 
13 makes like as the best player like like that's not i don't like that it's like which is which is like it's like i i like a lot more guys in the playoffs that a lot of people don't even consider better than russell westbrook good guys like chris paul jason kidd bob kuzi guys like that i trust them more in the playoffs than we pivoted so far from the goat debate but i want to say this about the goat debate again um lebron's goat debate would have been a lot stronger if from like year 17 to year now 21 if he would have snagged an mvp in a championship that longevity gap and he would have closed the accolades gap a little bit more and he would have the huge longevity gap that it could erase away some of that impact on winning gap but the fact that he didn't end up winning an mvp in 2020 the fact that he got hurt in 2021. Didn't win the. That MVP. was the Lakers' best team. That 20, was the best I, Lakers team. I thought, I, like 2021, like before their injury, the Lakers team was arguably better. Like, yeah, was that was the best Lakers team, and worst, he should have won. He was going to win MVP. I think he was in line to win MVP. Yeah, he was that first. Year. He was first. Yeah, definitely. I tried telling people because I thought I was delusional saying the Lakers could easily three peat after the bubble, and they were on their way. So oh, three P would have been hard. Three P would have been extremely hard. Yeah, like, it would have been difficult. Been so I thought the only thing they could have went back to back. So, like, I always thought that, like, LeBron's last year as the best player in the NBA was 2020. But now if I'm looking at it pre-injury from 2021, it might be 2021. Yeah, bro. We talked about the other day. And, dude, I'm not going to lie. That Westbrook trade, and I blame part of that on LeBron because he did want Westbrook. But then again, like, there is a GM that can veto it. But that, dude, when you look at the pieces they gave up, like Kyle Kuzma, think about how valuable Kyle Kuzma and and, uh, Contavious Caldwell KCP would be for this team this year. How good they would have been. Like it would have been the depth they would have had would have been elite. You know not what Kuzma. I mean? Not, not I, 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 yeah, I don't I don't see Kuzma success. The Kuzma in Washington like would that. not be the Kuzma in LA. No, but right? KCP, yes. But KCP. I, I, I mean, I mean, Kuzma in Washington was like the second option benefiting off of Bradley B and he was still like shot four percent below the league average. So it's kind of like and with no expectations to win and with a greater role. So it's yeah. pretty but, but KCP, about, yes. But here's the thing about that whole um about that whole champ, like so. My problem is when people talk about like the Mickey Mouse ring. That is a stupid excuse because you're just saying that because LeBron won the ring. Like, was it in Orlando? Yeah, but every player played on the same circumstances, and no one discredits Jokic's ring this year because he played against an eight seed. But the Heat that they year do. were one of the best they teams. Do. In the I had to make a whole video on it. You know, it's so hard. like, why do we discredit LeBron when he wins it against the Heat? Like, and I'm a Heat fan. I was rooting for LeBron that game, but people always ask me, "Who do you root for when they play?" I would, I was rooting for the Heat. I have the whole rest of my life to watch the Heat win championships. I've got a limited amount of time for Braun. So I'm watching. I was rooting for the Heat. I was rooting for the Lakers. And, dude, you got to look at it. Like, he was the best player in those playoffs. Like, it wasn't like he was, you know, he was the best player in that whole run. He was. So I think when you see that, those are the arguments that I dislike. The Mickey Mouse ring, the can't win without a super team. Because that's easily – not like you can disprove that pretty easily. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, well, that's the thing about, about, like, debating people on TikTok. And I came to realize this after a while. I say it all the time. If there's 25 people who tell you the same thing and that they all, all, these 25 people, they all agree on it, but they all have Down syndrome. Are you going to call, are you going to say like they're like, you know, you you know what I mean? It's like, you're not going to take them seriously. Group of people. Did you remove them? Oh, no. My bad. I don't know. I was was just removing him and bringing him back because Matt's analogies, like, every time are just like. (laughs) That's why, dude. That's (laughs) why I wanted to get banned on TikTok. But what I mean is there's a certain amount of people that you should take seriously for their opinions because they know what they're talking about. But there's a certain amount of people that it's kind of like, okay, these people, they don't really, like, do their due diligence. They don't do their research or they're just a hater. I'm not going to take them seriously. Think right. about like, it. Think well, about like, it. It's just, think, it's think, just like think about now. I don't entertain politics like I used to anymore because I hate that space. But it, if anyone knows anything about politics, it's kind of just like politics where there's the casuals and the actual knowers. And I'm still a bit of a casual because I consider myself someone who's still learning. So as a bit of a politics? casual, we fall back on talking points. Oh right. When you hop on these TikTok lives, I don't really be. I don't see you ever on. T- you should start doing TikTok lives. I don't know why. I, you should, don't I don't do. do I don't really. This is the second podcast I've ever been on. I went on. I don't know later. why you don't do TikTok lives. Yeah. I think those would be funny because I like doing bro, TikTok dude, lives. Dude, and we Mitch hop would get on really, live, bro. You hear huh? the trolls and Mitch is take the same comments. talking points over and over again. It's just like politics when people don't know much about politics. Whether what side they're on, they'll say the same talking points over right. and over again, and like, it's like, bro, I just can't stand the fact. Like Crunch Time was here earlier, and he, him, and I have a history because he makes these stupid <laughs> lists, bro. He trolls, and I would he, tell he him to trade if he was trolls. here. I'm not saying that now because I would literally say your lists are stupid because 
he puts Steph Curry ahead of LeBron James all time because he's beating them in the finals. What type of criteria is that? It's like the Skip Bayless talking points that I just despise, dude. It's like so dumb. Oh, he thinks like, uh, Curry peaked higher than LeBron. Too. Yeah, like that makes no sense. And then I, uh, the other ones, like what really you're talking about politics you. is true. It's like that one kid that comes to school after watching one uh, Stephen Crowder video and thinks he's like somehow this fucking – yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I was like referring to people just keep like it's just like politics. They spew. You know what I mean. But I think TikTok, dude. I think TikTok lives are cool, but it's just such a toxic. TikTok is such a toxic app, bro. Some of the comments I get, I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, fucking I know. Christ, I know well hand, right, man, bro. bro t- Kieran, Kieran, stop, stop. Kieran, Kieran's comment section's bad. I tend, I try to, I read my comment section. I know it's not really that because I get a bunch of comments. It's not really. I that get a lot crazy. too. It's not smart to read comments, but I like to read comments just so I can like because there's gonna be some people in my comments who like actually know ball. It can right. fix my wrong yeah. take. So I do look at my comments to see like, oh, maybe I was wrong here, and this dude could actually like give me a right reason. But there's just people who would just like say like, you don't know ball without giving you a single reason without a why single reason. they just and you just disagree with your take. And it's always the motherfuckers that are oh. too scared to put themselves out there and actually may have an opinion of themselves that do it behind an anonymous profile. That's what pisses me off. I think like in the blank like, profile. In the blank profile, bro. It's like bro, your profile bro, picture's blank. Yeah, blank. I don't even have one before. Like <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of funny. But dude, the thing I was gonna say, people like no matter what video I post now though, have you guys seen my videos that I talk about? Like I made the Bobby Portis video and the Doris Berg video, those were fucking <laughs> yes, insanely bro. viral. Like, but dude, no matter what video I post, I even dude, let me I even wait. I even made the video on the on the fucking lapello. Oh my god. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> bro, and but people are always gonna know me as a LeBron guy. No, but no matter what video I post, I'm always gonna be known as a guy. LeBron Glazer. It seems That's like you do. No, no. You use Jordan, so, LeBron, and Messi, Ronaldo, like every day, dude. I used to wake up before class, open up TikTok to check my feed, and like, I don't really scroll on TikTok anymore because a lot of people I follow their TikToks don't pop up. But your TikTok used to pop up on my stuff every day. I don't oh, really yeah. see them that much anymore. I would just wake up and see you like. Glazing Doris Burke, and I'm like, I just woke up. Glazing <laughs> Doris Burke. Hey, up, about to go to class. I'm eating Cheerios, listening to your TikTok. I think you talked about like which inside the NBA dude has the biggest. Yeah, no, yeah, with biggest long. And I was like, yeah, bro, I was like, thinking about it. I was like, think about it. What? What? Dude, but really think about it. What? Like, think about the NFL on CBS or the NFL on Fox. What crew has the biggest average? I'm not time? thinking about. It's got to be the inside the NBA crew. <laughs> Bro, I'm not thinking about Boomer size. Bro, think about Shaq, dude. That motherfucker's probably got 17 on him. Everybody else can just. Oh my time. god. <laughs> this pod is bro, really that's crazy. the thing. Like, I don't know. Like TikTok, I don't even scroll. I don't even, dude. I don't go on TikTok at all. Like when I post a video, that's the only time I'm on TikTok because it's just such a toxic ass place, bro. It sucks. Like it's, oh, you yeah, should do it's... at least one live a month. And you guys make like, money on lives? You can. They, you can like. Oh yeah. It. Oh god. I was on Casuals Live a couple weeks ago, and this one guy came in, and he would not stop donating to me. I ended up making thirty five dollars off of that one person. Yeah. Cool. I don't know how you pull money off TikTok. I don't know how you get money on TikTok. I don't do it for money, so I don't care. Bro, but, yeah, I, I, do, I don't either. I just, I just do it for fun. I do it for yeah, fun so. too. But I joined the Creativity Beta program, and I've made like a rack from it. What is that? Are you not in it? Nah. Bro, you gotta join that shit. Fun? Yeah, no, no, the creativity beta program. It's like this new thing where, like, if you make a video over a minute long, you get like you get paid for it, dude. I've made a rack. Like the video that I I made a video on on Monday that went extremely viral. I got like seven hundred k views, and I made one hundred and forty bucks from that shit alone. Uh, it seems like you need a lot of views to make money, but I would join it. I just don't know how to make money off TikTok. I don't. I don't have ten k yet, sadly. Bro, I feel like you've been on TikTok for forever, though. How the f- like? Yeah, he bro. had. I, I just started seriously last year, and I already have like sixteen k. Yeah, people just don't like me, so I guess <laughs> I lose so many followers. It's actually insane, dude. Really? What, were, what? What did you peak out? What did you get to? Like, what was the most? Oh, you dude, got? my hate was the Cooper Cup hate. My hate was that that was last year. I I basically called Cooper Cup a slot merchant. Like, the oh entire, my lord, dude. Like, I, I said, yo, he's going up against linebackers, and like. Dude, it's not impressive. Like Justin Jefferson wipes. <laughs> like, right. No, that did. But the thing is, on TikTok, there's like certain creators, especially in the NFL community, that if oh they stick your video, people just take it as fact. Like whatever they say, people are automatically like, oh, this guy is spitting. Spe- like I saw a video. I don't know who it was. This guy was naming off running backs that were better than Davin Cook. And he named like fucking uh, James Conner. And I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? James Conner's not. <laughs> 
I don't know who are you guys oh, know Mitch, who that is. You, by the way. Yeah, no, no, no. That's Theo. That's Theo, and he. The, I listen to his podcast every once in a while, and he, and he and he knows what he's talking about most of the time. But I feel like he just he just really pushed that one yeah, so, a lot. So, like my, so like this is the problem with like big creators, like especially on football TikTok. If someone says a take, they're gonna eat that up and just run with it. Yeah, like not looking at the film from themselves. Get to that point. That, that's my one problem with like. Like, I should be careful. Like, one problem with, like, Theo and, like, all those guys, like, like I just don't want to say Theo. I'm not oh, going to say any names, Theo. but I'm not going to say any names, but I want to get to that point where, like, I have such a big following where, like, no matter what I say. I could lie. Like, people will believe me. Like, you can just, like, some of those big creators, they can just say anything. People be like, yo, facts. Like, facts. Bro, you know what? And it'll not- be the worst take ever. Like, you Bro, can say, like. You see the sky's red, and you'd be like, spin! Like, Yeah, no, but dude, for me, this, this is not even, like, this is a kind of a subtle flex, but for me, in my soccer videos and a lot of the basketball videos, too, I ratio anybody that comes at me in the comments, and it's, like, a significant fucking ratio. Like, I'm, I like, because people, like, I don't know, people, people just, like, dude, because, like, people just, like, and that's the best feeling, too, when you get some clown in your comment section, you just fucking totally, like, ratio the fuck out of him with, like, a comeback. Yeah. That's the That's the best part. That's when, like, being a big creator is fun when you can just kind of like bully the little guys in the comment section. That's when it's See, fun. Now, Cause you make pro LeBron videos. Now I made pro LeBron videos and it's easy to ratio make an anti LeBron video. Now you're not going to do that for your brand, but dude, whenever I make a subtle anti LeBron video, it just gets eaten up. My videos. Now I've made so many, like my air on this podcast has just been like anti, like, like not like the I was about to say anti-establishment, but like anti-casual narrative. Like I try to like say the 2016 run was weak. Um, I Which it was, say, dude. I, I agree with that. It wasn't a hard run. The yeah, was yeah. Hard. I never thought you would agree with that, bro. 100. <laughs> they played, bro. Who they played? They played Detroit. They played the Raptors and they played the um, Hawks, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, the yeah Hawks, they played Atlanta. Who was their best player? Team. It was either like Horford or Millsap. Right? Yeah, they had Horford, All Millsap, Millsap Josh Horford was on that team too. Like, and my dude, Mike Budenholzer, I'm not taking any team seriously that he fucking coaches. The guy's overrated as shit. Like he's he's like, a kid. But bro, I I do think that run was overrated. I think the finals is what makes that run. Like I made a video talking about if the Heat won the championship, where would rank around among playoff runs all the time? And I think you commented on it, Stephen. I think you you said that you don't think the Cavs run was that good. And I think what puts it high for me is the fact that they you know that they won, they beat the Warriors seven three and nine Warriors. But the run itself, bro, Detroit and. Fucking Atlanta and, and the Raptors, not not a hard one at all. And they were the best team in the East that year. They were by far the best team in the East. Kyrie, that year. Were, Kyrie LeBron's and, second best player was better than yeah, any other like, first. Yeah, by far. That entire run, think, he was better I than think, the uh, better than Millsap, better than Drummond. Like, well, I think Drummond I was think, the first option. I think, I think it was LeBron's best Morris, year. But. I think LeBron's best year of like competition based is 2012. Um, yes, you got. I forget who they played in the first round. They played, I think, the Knicks. No, the that Knicks. was 2013. No, it was the Knicks. Knicks. It was the Knicks. The Knicks, right? Knicks yeah. fan, by the way. Five. Knicks fan, by the way. Um, and then Who's the Knicks fan? They Johnny played Herbom. the Knicks, sadly. Oh, really? Uh, uh, second round, they play the Pacers. They're down 2-1. So, like, I'm not saying they're going to win, but, like, they're putting up a good fight. And then, obviously, Boston. Like, Boston was the best defense in the league. And that and game five. Like, that game six is the best game. To me, it's the best game ever. Game six against Boston LeBron. 45-12-5. That that so much good legacy. Bro, Yo, if that, LeBron loses that game, that impact on winning stuff goes completely. No, out. I'm just saying, if LeBron loses that game, oh my god. Yeah, they would have broken up the big three. Parallel was gonna break up the big three and fucking basically just fail the experiment. But the fact that he like that's my problem. Like the whole that's another narrative that I hate. The talking point, and it's straight from the Skip Bayless fucking like all these network shows. LeBron's not caught. Come on. You know Speaking what I mean? Network like, show, bro. He's either okay. He's Cole either one or yesterday he, or the other day saying that Austin Reeves and Matt McClung were comparable. And he was showing Austin Reeves' career when it's obviously stupid because Austin Reeves became got actual minutes and became good post the All Star break. So show his numbers post the All Star break, and, and he was averaging like twenty like on, on forty in the postseason. Exactly, no, really. bro. I will, and Matt I will McClung, I think, played like four games in the NBA too, and he Matt showed McClung, like, he yeah, sucked, he compared bro. him to Matt McClung. Um, LeBron, LeBron, okay, I will say this: you don't have to think LeBron's like the clutchest player ever. He's either two, he's either two or one. Like, hundred no percent. 
But the conversation That's about why LeBron, I don't do this debate. I couldn't care about it any less. Yeah, I think I like if you look, if you're looking at the most toxic debates in America, you got politics, religion, and Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. Oh yeah, by far, bro. Trust me, I, I've gotten death threats over the fucking Michael Jordan thing. It's crazy, bro. Like people death take threats. Really, yo, bro. yo. In ten years, in ten years, it's gonna be Mahomes and Brady. But anyway, uh, nah, Mahomes yeah. clears. Let's be honest, guys. Mahomes <laughs> is a better player. Mahomes is a better Mahomes, player. Mahomes gets another MVP in the Super Bowl. Oh, guys, Mahomes, dude. My, no. That, no, that's not a bad take. Dude, watch them with your eyes. Who is the better player? It's Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> he may have played the best Super Bowl in a loss I've ever seen. Motherfucker was throwing parallel to listening. the ground, hitting receivers in the fucking face mask, bro. I've never seen him. He's, he's insane. To me, he's... No, I but, can't even hear what you're what's saying. Gonna I'm not hurt <laughs> what's going what's gonna to hurt Mahomes is because uh, when he won the Super Bowl, has I know Graham over Mahomes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad take. When I when I used to talk football on this podcast, again, when football season was a thing. We did talk football, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I said after the Super Bowl that Patrick Mahomes is an easy GOAT debate. But what's going to get in his way is that loss to Brady. To add a context to casuals, it's going to get in his way. Now, to ball knowers who see that was an lopsided affair, especially offensive line. It's not going to matter that much. Line, um, it was a big deal. Bro, he was missing his whole old line, basically. No I think, didn't he have Mike Remmers playing like yeah. like like right tackle I think, though? I think they were missing. They're missing. Both they, they, they were missing Schwartz. That uh, Ozemiel was missing for that entire year. Who uh, else did they Fisher have? Got hurt the previous F- game. Fisher. Fisher was hurt. He was, he tore his yeah, ACL just the game one before the best, that. Actually, the best front seven in football, and you're getting absolutely no time to throw. You're hitting dudes like he said right here. They're dropping and parallel it. to the ground. I think I think I think Brady's like longest completed pass on that game was like twelve yards. Yeah, it was crazy, and I think it was a touchdown to Gronk. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that touchdown to Gronk. Yeah, it was a touchdown to Gronk. And, but bro, like, he had like, like what twenty seconds to throw. By the way, Something yeah, like, like, no, like hypothetically, let's say like Michael Jordan and LeBron played like the NBA Finals, like if like MJ if MJ like beats like LeBron, they're like oh go debate over. Doesn't fucking matter. I was like, bro, like, what if LeBron just like outplays MJ in that? Se- like, yeah, exactly. Like, right. like, 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 like that. That's what I say. It's like being the winner and being the best player doesn't mean that you were the best player in the series. You could say maybe like you're the most impactful to winning, but it doesn't mean that you're better than somebody. Which is why, well, which is why when I tell people like when I'm looking at a guy like Jerry West, who I think is like one of the six best playoff performers ever, people are like, oh well, he's one and eight in the finals. Look at the way that he was playing in those finals. And that's the teams he's up against, bro. Mm. Look at the teams he's playing. Kobe Bryant. Against. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, if LeBron did end up, if LeBron in 09 or 2010 ended up going to the finals and played Kobe, and oh LeBron, my God, I don't want to hear about it, bro. Know, it Majority of people in America to this day, if LeBron would have had a loss in the finals to Kobe, would have Kobe higher than LeBron all time. And bro, they may put him one. They may put him one. I don't know what's worse. The Kobe fans? No, nah, they'll still put him below MJ, but bro. I'm just saying jo- Kobe would be two, and LeBron would never be above Kobe. If think- No, I'm going to put this on the plate. This is going to be for TikTok. This is going to be a clip. Like, imagine if LeBron James would have went to an NBA Finals in 09 and 10 and played Kobe and lost. Oh, my God. I think to most people – LeBron's not even higher than Kobe. He's not. Like it, would, it, 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 it would not. It would not matter Kobe. like that. It would not matter Imagine like that. Dude, That's the thing. To Kobe fans, to MJ fans, to old heads, out of context. If Kobe would have won head to head against LeBron in the finals, it would automatically remove LeBron from Kobe discussions. It would all depend of the context Kobe of which he of which he would have lost that series. If he would have played great. Uh, maybe on the same level as Kobe, that. and then went on to do everything else that he was going to no, do. Thing, he would still is, be better. Like it, it wouldn't have mattered if LeBron still had that run, like like 2011 and now. Like it still wouldn't have mattered. People would still wouldn't matter. Kobe Try having a LeBron versus Kobe debate with a Kobe fan when Kobe Bryant has more championships, especially if one of those championships came beating LeBron. Beating LeBron? Oh my God, bro! And that's actually a more toxic <laughs> debate than the LeBron Jordan debate. That would be the most. LeBron, I, I honestly debate. agree. Bro, that, the like LeBron it. Kobe debate is more toxic than the LeBron Jordan debate because Kobe fans are really like they. Well, think about like, like, I'm, a, I'm a diehard Kobe fan. That's the thing, but that's the thing that like I don't associate myself with all these other Kobe fans who put him in these discussions that he doesn't belong in. It's like I don't think Kobe even belongs in the same discussion. Uh, uh, not not with not with LeBron and Jordan. I don't even think he's in the same discussion as Kareem, Bill, and Bill Russell. No. It's just and like football. Or, I, think, or Shaq. I don't think I don't think him and Shaq are close. No, just, I think Kobe. I think at, at least at least the peaks are not close. 
It's just like the NFL. Like, I think Mahomes can clearly has a clear GOAT path. But to most people, he'll never be the GOAT. And when their biggest talking points will be because Brady beat him in the Super Bowl. Out of context, that would be their most that would be the biggest talking point. That would be the same thing if Kobe. It would have been like if LeBron would have lost to Kobe in the finals. And think about it like soccer. This didn't happen. But what if Ronaldo and Messi matched up in the World Cup and Ronaldo beat Messi? Yeah. Ronaldo would be the GOAT. Well, they did match up in the Champions League final and Messi wiped his ass. So that happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wasn't so, going to tell you, bro. Um, um, think about this. Think about the narrative around LeBron James's career. If in 2018, he blows a 3-1 lead. Yeah. Or in 2019, or 2017, he misses the playoffs entirely. I understand that Kobe Bryant didn't have a good supporting cast, but blowing a 3-1 lead is blowing a 3-1 lead, especially in the way that he did it. And I think the Kobe Bryant discussion, like people talk about his mentality and how relentless he was, but that's also the same mentality that couldn't make it work with Shaq and that drove Dwight Howard out of town and that alienated the young players later on in his career. You know, all those things come into effect. So when we take the good with Kobe Bryant and the, and the way that he was relentless and he was, you know, selfish to a fault, we also got to take the bad with that because he could have won multiple more championships with Shaquille O'Neal, but he just couldn't make it work. He didn't. He wanted the spotlight, and I think that plays a factor into into it as well. And I think Kobe Bryant later on in his career. I mean, people talk about LeBron losing to the Mavs. Kobe Bryant got swept by that team. Mm. He got fucking swept by those Mavs. He got mm. swept That's by the Mavs. You need to go on TikTok Live, bro. The thing, the thing is, is yeah, like, exactly. if Kobe and Shaq work, I think no doubt in my want, no doubt in my mind, they win 05, they win 06. And then Shaq would be like 35 at that point. So he'd probably be like regressing heavily after that. But they could legit have five championships together. Like, actually, could. I, th- I think if Shaq was to continue playing like he always did in the finals in like 2000, 2001, and was here, here, consistently here, doing here, that throughout the series, here. I would put him over Kareem. Yeah. Are they beating Detroit the next year? Yes. Yes. Can they do it? Yes. Yeah, I think they can. I think they could be. I think. Be Detroit. I think so. And so, I'll go to the bathroom with, real quick. One second. With Detroit, with Detroit, I never thought like Detroit. I thought Detroit was like a one season team, like a one season championship team. I never thought they would get over the hump again. So maybe, maybe the Lakers like with Shaq went seven. Then I'm pretty sure they went seven, no five to the Spurs. Yeah, but like the Spurs were just like better. Like I don't know. But the Lakers were just better in 04. Mm. The Lake the, the Lakers had a lot of old veterans like on that team. They Gary Payton. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had Malone and GP on that team. Oh, and, that's and, the, other and, the Shaq and Kobe thing about like what if Shaq and Kobe ran it back? What would the rest of the roster look like that following year? That is a good question. They still have Derek Fisher, probably. They probably bring back yeah. Derek Fisher. Um they don't have Lamar Odom because Lamar Odom was in the Shaq trade. Yeah, that's true. Um, How do they fill out that rest of the roster? That's the also they thing. Def- they could definitely, they could definitely do it. I like, they'd be fine. Because people um, always say, like, yo, if Shaq and Kobe would have stayed together, they would have won multiple more. They would have won more championships. But my thing is, well, can they beat Detroit again the next year? I don't know. And my thing is, how though, would they fill? How would they even got to the finals? How would they beat San Antonio if the rest of the roster isn't going to fill out? Because they struggled. I, I will to build, say this, struggled to build the rest of the roster when Shaq left. Kobe was with a bunch of scrubs for two years. How do they fill out the rest of the roster? I will say this though: I think if Shaq stayed, it would benefit Shaq more than Kobe. Like, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Because I don't think Kobe would have ever reached his like peak level like elite play. Like in all time too, because yeah, yeah, like under Shaq again. Uh, at like, that point, I think Kobe was better than Shaq at that point. But into oh four, oh mm, five, I think Kobe was probably better than Shaq. In oh five, Shaq was really good that year. Yeah, didn't he finish second in MVP to Steve Nash? Yeah, yeah, he did. But MVP also has to do a lot. I think I think Shaq was well. better that year. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's Kobe. But, I think Shaq um, peak is the best peak in NBA history to me. Really? Oh wait, the no. Oh, third, 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 third. I would say third. Sorry. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's same, go. same. Go. I'd say, I'd say Jordan, Braun, well, Braun, Jordan. Then I'd have Shaq. Yes. Um, yeah, Shaq it would be like ninety-three Braun, ninety-one Jordan, or whatever, so, and then uh, two thousand Shaq. I, I think the top five peak is ninety-four Hakeem Olajuwon, four is nineteen seventy-seven Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, three is two thousand Shaq, two is thirteen Lebron, and one is ninety-one MJ. 91 MJ was on one, bro. He was a You're missing player. a player. Yeah. You're literally missing a player. No. June Flight Reacts. Oh, my God. 
Awful. <laughs> no, but like borderline would be 16 Curry, probably 62 Russell, uh, 87 Mavericks like up there. Uh, like, Bird, Bird had a oh, yeah, Bird, Bird had a pretty too. high peak. Yeah, yeah. Bird had a pretty high peak. And um, oh, Duncan, what am I saying? What am I saying? Duncan. Did you say like 93 or 94 Hakeem or 94, 95 Hakeem? 94 Hakeem would be five for me. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I have 94 Hakeem top. Oh, he peak. never said Garnett. He never said Garnett. Let's yeah, Garnett go. doesn't have Garnett's a top 10 so peak ever. Yo, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch uh, if, if you was always know this, some casual takes hates Kevin Garnett. You don't like Kevin Garnett? Um, I do, but I think this app, this Stop. space. Stop. No, you don't. Way too. Bro, I got flamed for saying. I got flamed for saying that I think uh, Garnett was a better player than Dirk. People were like, "How could you say that? Did you see Dirk?" It's, it's a good Garnett? take. I think it's, it's a, a good take. take. I think Kevin Garnett. I would rather like. I think Dirk Nowitzki had a great run in twenty eleven, but I think peak for peak, I would take Kevin Garnett over Dirk. Peak for peak. Peak, peak for peak. I'm dude. I've been we're on so long. I'm starting to lag. Peak for peak. It is the man, Kevin Garnett. He's more skilled. Defensive gaps there. But man, I seen Dirk Nowitzki get it done, bro. As the clear number bro, one, I bro. seen Dirk Nowitzki. Bro, Kevin, Kevin Garnett was, Kevin Garnett was seen, the number one in the way. I've seen. Well, he was the best player on the team, but it was. <laughs> he's he's better than Paul Pierce. Pierce. He's gonna bring up Paul. Hey, Pierce. he's better than Paul Pierce. Don't say. Hey, hey, yo, 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 Dirk Nowitzki. Paul Pierce. Finals, Dirk Nowitzki never lost a Finals MVP to Jason Terry. Kevin Garnett lost a Finals MVP to a dude who pooped himself and excused himself. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's an accolade. Reason, that's the only reason why Paul Pierce won it. And Dirk, no, I seen Dirk Nowitzki. I seen Dirk no, Nowitzki. Paul Pierce is literally like Willis Reed in that way, where it's like, okay, he had an Dirk injury, and came off, came off the court, came back. Let's give him the Finals MVP. Even though Frazier was better in the Knicks series and Garnett was better in the Celtics series, it, it's it's so dumb. I've seen, yeah, I've seen Dirk Nowitzki take his team to NBA Finals Yo, twice uh, as a man in the tough Western Conference. I've seen Dirk Nowitzki go on deeper postseason runs as the man, clear man, not have to go run to Boston. I've seen Dirk Nowitzki go head to head, play Kevin Garnett at his peak, well, 2002, at near his peak, and give that man 33 and beat him in a playoff Dirk. series head to head. That counts. Dirk, so at least a little uh, slightly better because I seen him get it done as the man, bro. Dirk, but Dirk, Dirk is uh Dirk is cor- closer to uh Barkley than to Garnett. He is. He's he, he is closer to Barkley than he is to Garnett. Accolades, I'm pretty sure you can watch accolades. Um That's what I, mean. I think they have the same all NBA first teams, they have the same amount of MVPs. I'm gonna give it to Dirk Nowitzki because he got a finals MVP and he was the clear number one on the team. Give it to Dirk. Finals MVP or defensive player of the year. Uh no, I also no it's it. not about the accolades. It is oh, not about skill the goes to Garnett. Pete goes Garnett. Longevity is Garnett. It's Garnett. It's Garnett. I think Dirk has one more. I think Dirk is additional on NBA. So I think I think it's Dirk. It might be Dirk. All NBA, all NBA is gonna be misleading. The longevity is close. Oh, you can watch the longevity. Um, but when it, it came down to list. impact on winning, it's Dirk Nowitzki, bro. Dirk Nowitzki, playoff runs. Better head to head, better championship as the man, better. Okay, they played win, one right? series, bro. They played one okay. series, okay. But went to two finals as the man, went on deeper postseason runs as the man, clear man. Not you can say, yes, was he the best player in 08? Yes, so is but Jason Tatum cool? better than Steve Nash? Whoa, how because he's been able to make it to the finals as the man. <laughs> but it's not just that; it's more than that. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Well, I just went down it. I just went. I just went down the. You said it, you see. You said you say it's more than that. It's close. because yeah, you could make close. the finals as the man. But if you are better than somebody in all these different categories, then you're better. But he's not though, bro. Yo, the impact of winning gotta, gaps is the biggest. I gotta gap. go, bro. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I I was trying to end this an hour ago. Bro, <laughs> yo, oh I mean, Jesus Christ! It's almost yeah. Yeah, thank yeah you I tried to end this an hour ago, and then we started chatting. You guys, by the way, Kieran, Maddie, I appreciate you I guys. Apologies, bro. Hey, yep. nice meeting you, man. See thank you for having me on. I'll see. That. Are you going to post these clips on TikTok? Uh, I've been so behind on getting edits. I still have to do. I'm a po- I still haven't post last week's show with Kieran and Jaden. I still. Well, if I see it, then I'll, then I'll leave a comment. You will. You will. I will clip. I will clip stuff up. I. I will guys. Right. Yeah, see. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in the 46th episode. We literally went an extra hour long. I just didn't want to do this, but we were just chatting and I was like, okay, let's just do it. Um, by the way, uh, Moses Malone is worse than Dennis Robin, but uh, I have an eye appointment in literally like 10 minutes too. So this would have went on for like 10 more minutes. I almost forgot that I had a whole eye appointment in like 10 minutes. So I got to go. Didn't uh, see that coming. Guys, appreciate you guys for tuning in. This was actually a really good pod, real hoops, you know, some factual takes era. 
we're going to, I literally said, we're going to be more cognizant on time like last week. And then here we go. Um, we're gonna have a cleaner pod next week. I don't know what's going to happen next week. Cause when does legit free agency start? Like Tomorrow. I know the 30th, you can like start having discussions, but when it do usually people like starts legit... on July 4th? Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So Monday, I'm going to come back Monday or depending if there's bigger news, I could flex it up. Sooner or later, I'm going to try to do a top 20 players in the league stream where we literally just dedicate an entire stream to identifying who are the top 20 players in the league. I've been trying to do that, but that might be the next stream on Monday. Just depends what happens in free agency. And I got to um, do free agency soon. <laughs> but until then, keep following TikTok because I'm either going live Sunday or Monday or Tuesday. Just depends when the news is relevant. But until then, we're about to hit the two hour mark. Oh my God. I got to go. Thank you guys. Yeah, see you.